everybody and welcome to the Driftmasters European Championship. My name is Becky Evans and we are live on Red Bull TV. This is the season finale. It is round six and we are here at the PGE Arena in the center of Warsaw. Now I'm stood in the middle of this track that has been laid in the last 72 hours and after this event is finished they have only 36 hours to take it up. It has been an incredible feat by the team to make this event happen and my gosh we are not alone in this stadium we are expecting 53,000 drift fans to join us here it's going to be an incredible incredible event and tonight we are going to crown our drift masters champion for 2023 the fans that have been in the city we can see them as we're walking around it feels like a big concert a football game everywhere you go there are people with shirts for all of the different drivers it's been so cool to see how this has taken over warsaw i've been walking through the paddock and just seeing how excited everybody is for this you've really got to think guys Drift Masters has come so far. What an incredible season. So far, we have had five rounds across Europe with four different winners. And tonight, it is still open to see who is going to take that top spot. Now, we've got to talk about what happened at Ferropolis last time. It was a heater of an event, and you need to check out this recap right now. Hello everybody and welcome to the Driftmasters European Championship for round five here in Ferropolis, the city of iron. It's going to be fantastic this evening. The energy is going to be high. The crowd is going absolutely wild here. We have got temperatures of over 32 degrees here. Track temps at nearly 40. So you know this one is going to be an absolute scorcher. The sun is spitting the iron and the steel and the concrete here in Germany. Welcome to the craziest drift event you've seen anywhere in the world this year. Yes, it is a flooded quarry, which has created an island, and we're now using it as a drift track. And tonight, it's going to separate some of the best drivers in the world from each other. Already today, we've seen shock exits, upsets, and the championship fight blown wide open. Here's the Wild card up against Jack Shan. He's 16 years of age. He's from Israel. It tastes Seda, nothing to lose, and he has to go head to head with the current championship leader. It tastes Seda feeling the pressure. Nice initiation, though. Very nice lead line. He replicates Shanahan. Now Shanahan starts to draw the string closer as he pulls himself closer up to the door of that black BMW, but loses some ground on the final turn and now finds the pocket. It's going to be super close again. And Ite Seda gets the win and takes out the current championship leader. Well, Dave, that just leaves one more battle to go. Let's head to the final. They're on the line, Shanahan and Fjainsek. Whoever wins will be the first person to win two events this year. Fjainsek chasing back to the top of the tree. The light goes green at the bottom of the start line, and we are good to go. So Shanahan fires down onto the door, and he's closer than he was before, and he's deeper than he is before. And look at Vincex closer than he was before. He now makes a big dive in outside zone four. He's wheel to wheel. This is closer than they've ever been as they fire through that transition. Shanahan on a flyer, but Vincex not going anywhere. And now the separation opens up as Shanahan takes it across the line. First place goes to Peter Fjainsek, gets the win, he's back, he's in business, and he's coming for everyone in Poland at the final round of the year. Fjainsek still in the championship hunt. exciting event and that venue one of my favorites of the season Peter Vincek taking the top spot there and Connor Shanahan in second Peter needed those points to push him back up the championship standings so we're here I've taken a walk down to the paddock to check out how the guys are feeling ahead of top 32 and we are here with our current points leader Connor Shanahan Connor let's throw it back to last year we got the car all the way to the tunnel it was all happening and then suddenly it wasn't this year, you're in a much better position. What would it mean to you to take this championship back to Killavullen this time? Yeah, I don't know if I'm in a much better position because it's probably been the most testing weekend mentally. So draining. Today, also zero practice right now, no chase runs. So it's hard to stay super confident. I was so confident coming in here to prove that I was better than everybody else. But to be honest, right now, it's been, it's been hard to keep the emotions under control, to try to stay settled. And, you know, the guys have been giving it everything. And I was proud last night that I could pull that run off and give something back to them on the first run. They worked so hard to, to get me out for qualifying. So 
Yeah, to be honest, it's crazy. I've been like trying to process everything as, as best I can, and there is lots of pressure also, you know. I don't want to lose. It's going to hurt if I lose, but I think if I am going to lose, I want to go down with a fight, you know. I want to prove that I was good enough to be in the running of it, and me, Laurie, and Jack spoke uh, this morning before practice, and, you know, we said to each other, forget about everything, you know. Whoever beats each other it deserves to be the champion anyway, so it's better that we're battling each other, that, you know, we don't want an easy road into the final. Of course, I would take it, but, uh, you know, yeah, uh, for sure, if we have a chance to, to battle, the, battle it out with the guys, then it proves to, to the whole world that this guy deserves to be a champion, and that's the plan tonight. Excellent, Conor. Good luck in your top 32. Right, let's see if we can grab Jack. Mr. Jack Shanahan, qualifying yesterday. That was a nervy one. Obviously, first run didn't quite go your way, but then you put a lovely run on the board to get yourself into the show. I know how hard it is to control nerves around a big event like this. Did you have a little ritual last night? What were you thinking? What was the last thing you were thinking before you went to sleep? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, like, obviously, after the first run, I was really, really pissed off at myself. But, like, at the same time, I only spun because I was trying to do the perfect run. And uh, to be honest, up until that point, like, I watched it back. I don't think anybody else done a run like that up until that point. So. I was still happy with that, like obviously I was just going a little bit too hard and it was either put it in the wall or spin it and obviously we've had enough work this weekend with Connor's car so <laughs> try to keep her in one piece but um, yeah to be honest I don't even think it's the nerves I think it's just the want to actually perform like it's like all they wanted was to put on that perfect run and just like have everyone go mental you know like when I left the start line I wasn't actually that bad but like the second run obviously then like it was like I had the whole weight of the stadium on my shoulders being like you have to put a run in so that was probably that was even more nerve-wracking than the first run. So, but yeah, we just kind of toned it down, put in like a, in my opinion, a bad run, but it was enough to get a 92, which was quite good. So, yeah, it was interesting. Last night we just tried to stay as relaxed we had as relaxed as we could. Had some pizza with the bed, and I uh, got a good night's sleep. So it wasn't too bad. But tough day in the office today for sure. So all we can do now is. Give it 100% and see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Good luck, Jack. Cheers. Thank you. We're going to take a wander down the paddock now. So currently, as it stands, we have six championship contenders. Now, the thing is, top 32 is such a nervous time. Because at the moment, as the points stand, we've got 359 points with Connor in the lead. But coming just close behind with 33 points is Laurie Heinenen, Jack with 312, and right behind him is Yuha with 311. Peter Viensek putting himself back in the mix with 293, and then Dwayne Mc Kiva with 277. So six possible championship winners right here. Mr. Laurie Heinenen, right on time. Here he is. So, Laurie, it's been an interesting season for you. You've been consistent. You've been Mr. Consistent getting into top eight finals, but haven't won a round yourself yet. And yet you find yourself in second position. Do you think this is the track where you can take that top spot? Yeah, I think it suits my driving style. I like the small technical tracks and uh, I think the car is good also. Like, yeah, why not? <laughs> and you had a few issues with the steering rack yesterday. You were telling me it felt a little bit numb. What does that mean when you're on a track like this? Do you need all of that feeling to ensure the car is in the right position when you're heading towards those walls? Yeah, especially on this track, you have many transitions and quick ones. So when it like it's numb on the first like two milliseconds, it's all all over the place already. So, yeah. All right, Laurie, good luck in your top 32, and I'm rooting for you. Thank you. Right, we'll head over to Yuha Rintanen now. Now, Yuha, this is a brand new build this year. This car, he's come out swinging. But the Finn, this would mean a lot to him. He's competed all over the world. So for him to maybe take the top spot in Europe would be a massive one. Mr. Yuha Rintanen, how are you? You're having a little look at your car here. How is the car? Uh, it's fine now. Uh, had a little wall contact on the practice, so I didn't get any practice runs. Okay. But uh, it should be fixed now. Always so nice and calm. I love that energy from you. Now, you've competed all over the world. I was just telling everybody you've been in FD, you've been in Drift Masters, you've been a Finnish champion. What would it mean to you to be a European champion this time? It would be great. Uh, the level of Drift Masters is so high at the moment. So we are, this season we've done even better than we were originally planning or hoping for. Yeah. So everything is a plus, but uh, hopefully everything's up for grabs and it'll be an inter interesting race. I feel like you're the man to say one step at a time. So good luck in your top 32, Yuha. Exactly, thank you. Okay. 
It's good to see smiles on faces, but I know these guys are going to be thinking all about that top spot. But you've got to get through top 32 first. Let's see where Mr. Viensek is. This is a big one for him. It's like he's a home race, so people are going to be looking to see if they can take he can take the crown. Let's see if he's in here. I don't know where Mr. Viensek is. We can ask for him. Gello. At the moment, it looks like Peter is not looking to come and have a chat with me. Maybe he's sat inside just calming himself before the big event. I wouldn't blame him. There's a lot of people here coming to watch him drive. So I'll have one last little look, see if I can find him. Is Peter in there? OK, so Peter is just getting himself ready for top 32. So, guys, there you have it. That's the roundup. That's our top five championship contenders. They're all ready. There's quite a, everyone's feeling quite calm. I'm so excited to see how this all plays out. So I'm going to hand you up to our kings of the commentary box, Ian Waddington and Dave Egan. Guys, I cannot wait to see this. Well, if you're excited, Becky, we are even more excited here up in the rooftops. We can see the fans pouring into the biggest event that drifting has ever witnessed. We will be at max capacity, 53,000 people when we go under the lights for the main event top 16 later on today. My name is Dave Egan. I'll be talking you through all of the action alongside my good friend and colleague, Ian Waddington. Ian, we've been in this sport for over 10 years. We've never seen anything quite like this. This is like a dream, the sport of drifting, 20 years ago, had its first ever European event. There was 100 people there. Well, now we are filling out stadiums with this incredible championship and a huge championship fight on the line. It is a dream, Dave. It is an absolute dream. I walked out to the stadium earlier and I took a round look at all these faces saying that this, is this how far European drifting has come? How much further can it go? Well, I need to get today underway before we move into the future, but what a dream, what a weekend. And tonight, history is going to be made on that track. Absolutely, and this is the biggest event, and those drivers are feeling that pressure. The fans are ready, you guys are ready, and this is how we're going to run things for the rest of today. Right now, we are heading towards our top 32. Half the grid immediately eliminated from there, and then we go to our top 16 at 6.55 p.m. local time for the biggest event the biggest main event anyone's ever dreamed of in drifting. Well, to decide who's going through on all those, we've got our judging panel, including head judge Kevin O'Connell, who is also a dab hand as a painter decorator, but he's an even better judge. Kevin, this track, it's technical, it's tight, it's no runoff, and you guys are going to be very harsh on the drivers this weekend, as we've noticed in qualifying. Absolutely, David, you did say it there. It is super technical, but we saw in qualifying that these guys are well able for that technicality. We saw, I think it was over 20 drivers nailing that qualifying line that we looked for, so we are going to be super clinical of that lead run that we're going to be looking for. And speaking of that lead run, for the lead driver, what we're going to be looking for is for them to hit all of those clipping points, maintain nice, consistent angle throughout the entire course, and of course, drive so that the chase car can follow. But what we all want to see here is that chase run. And what we're really going to be looking for is maximum proximity from that chase driver. We're going to be looking for them, for them to maintain proximity for as much as possible, initiate no later than the lead driver, match or better the lead driver's angle. Very important around this circuit. We don't want to see them cutting the line or the angle. And of course, mimic the lead driver's transitions and line throughout the entire course. I think we are going to see some fireworks right from the off here, Dave. I mean, we're expecting what we saw practice earlier on today before the cameras went live. Everybody was playing the mind games. They were getting into each other's heads. Doors were being smashed. Rear ends were being lost. And we hadn't even got to the business end of the top 32. It's a dream come true. And we're ready to rock for the biggest drift event in the history of drifting. The fans are in from 23 different nations here tonight, mostly Polish, because they still have Peter Wiencek in the fight. However, it is going to be Finland and Ireland fighting out. Here's the track. you got to go wide on that outer zone one and then look at this inside clip for inner zone two this is the fun one inner zone three on the wall switch the car immediately back onto the wall again put the rear wheel flex the back bumper flex, flex the taillights don't make it alter the steering on the car this little touch and go in the middle of the track keep an eye on that for the competition lead driver's got to put some wheels through there then it's a transition back to these two long outer zones four and or five and six rather across the finish line and if you get that far you're a very lucky person because this is one of the most treacherous tracks on the calendar 
And this is the tail of the tape for this top 32. As Becky mentioned at the start of the show, six drivers mathematically can still win this championship. But if any driver, bar Connor Shannon, loses that battle in the top 32, they are out of contention for the 2023 championship. And Ian, every single battle looks like a final. It certainly does, Dave. We've had this consistently throughout the year. These guys have been stepping up their level round on round. We're going to take a look at some of them. For me, Zalewski, Juha Rittenen, Rittenen in that championship fight. But he goes up against a former Driftmasters European champion. We go down the list. Let's take a look. Connor Shanahan takes on Mika keski Corpi. You can't get anyone out this weekend of a fight because everyone is on their A game. Piscotti, Oran Nilsson, Kevin Piscotti has turned up the last two rounds and put on a masterclass. Absolutely. Look, here's what I like. Peter Vinesek taking on the on-form Kevin Pizzor and Jack Shannon still in the championship taking on Biagioni and then Laurie Heinen taking him on a man, David Karkoshik, who's got plenty of podiums in these stadium tracks. This is going to be one of the craziest top 32s you've ever witnessed and we are ready, you are ready, the fans are ready, and the stadium is ready as we head to top 32. Five rounds, five venues, thousands of laps, tens of drivers, and it all comes down to this. The biggest finale in drift history will line up on the grid as the stadium starts to party. But the big story straight away is that drama is, in, is going on in the pits. Calais Rovempera, a 99-point run in qualifying. Absolutely, he's the current WRC Rally Champion, the youngest ever WRC Rally Champion. Scored a near-perfect 99 in qualifying, but in practice this morning, car shuts down and he is out of competition. Oil pump failure, maybe engine failure in that car, and he is not going to compete, which means that Oliver Randalu from Estonia, who woke up this morning thinking, I gotta take on this wonder kid, has just got a gift. And if this is gonna tell us anything about this competition, Ian, is that there is nothing guaranteed, nothing predictable, and everything from here on out is a game of chance. I had this conversation yesterday with Jack Shanahan and Connor Shanahan. They both said anything can happen off the line. Anything can happen in practice before top 32. These cars have done six hard rounds now of competition. The final round is where it all counts. For me right now, Oliver Randalu has just been gifted a car into the top 16. This could be the dream weekend for him now. All he has to do is initiate. So I'm not sure what's happened there for Oliver Randalu, but he come off the line. But he does have to initiate, I do believe, um, due to the rules, the technicalities. There we go. So he's got up and going. We've got the car shut down, maybe. So there we go. He does initiate, Dave. He makes it around the first corner. It but is scrappy. Car, but that car but that is car's not, not right either. And Oliver Randalu, with no practice before qualifying, managed to get one qualifying run, which crept him into top 32, just in 32nd position. He was going to go against Rova Perra. Rova Perra has an oil pump failure. And now Randalu has got an issue with the car. Both cars. And we knew Randalu was on the edge all the way through this competition of whether the car would actually work. They're saying it's an electrical, it's a technical problem. It's not an obvious mechanical fix. They don't know what it is. So it is going to be uh, Oliver Randalu. I think he's coming back to the start line just to initiate. And I'm not sure. You know what? It's one of those nights where I think we're going to have to, you know, just hold our breath because <laughs> you think it's predictable. You look at the last five rounds of competition, you think you know who's the favorite, who's going to go here. But last year, it was an unknown. The 40th position in the championship won the event in the stadium because that's how unpredictable it is. Add all that pressure, all those eyes at home and here at the stadium. Well, that's the, the variable, I think, here tonight. And the noise of these fans are going to be crazy. Oliver Randalu comes into that first corner, pulls the handbrake, and the car does not initiate. No, I mean... So I'm going to just put it out there and say, if he doesn't initiate, therefore, and finish that first initiation, does he get eliminated also from this battle? Yeah, well, I think what the judges now are discussing is between themselves, and they're talking to the guys behind the scenes that are, that are feeding us in, in the information, Dave, because we, we say we know I'm, it all, I'm but we I'm don't know it all. I'm going to take a prediction. <laughs> We've never witnessed this before in drifting, and I, and I think we're going to have a double elimination here. Yeah, I think that's I what think it's going to come gonna down to. I think we're going to have Oliver Randall unable to initiate in a battle where all he had to do was complete 25 feet of the corner, and he couldn't do it. And, uh, and Rovapera obviously doesn't turn up to the line. That means that this is a completely default battle. We're going to get some confirmation on that. Yeah, I just, just got it in my ear, Dave. And no dr neither driver will go through. So Caliber over and Pera bows out competition. So does Oliver Randalu. Oliver Randalu obviously will not progress past the, the top 32 because he couldn't initiate on that first corner. So that means whoever wins the battle between now Korpalinski and Max Heydrich will automatically go through the top 16 and potentially into the great eight. So this could be this is incredible. a buy straight into the great eight for either one of these drivers. I was just about to say, winning this battle for either the German Max Heydrich or the Polish driver Korpelinski, and this is going to be a huge heavyweight battle here. 
either driver now wins two battles if they win this in because there's nobody to uh, no opponent in the top 16 so they're going to go straight to the top eight which i'm thinking right now would be a best place finish for either driver this season max heinrich the german we know he's wild he's unpredictable he's one of the standout showmen of this championship korpelinski the more calculated he loves that sim drifting he's on the simulator doing thousands of laps he's technical he's tight he makes very little mistakes this one is two very different styles coming head to head as our first proper battle of the top 32 and i believe there's going to be fireworks from the off here it certainly is well look we're going to give the cars a quick walk around there and uh we we'll see the graphics go on the screen. Poland versus Germany for the first real battle of the evening. Well, I can tell you which one the fans are going for here because <laughs> there's a lot of Polish people in this stadium. They're going to want Korpolinski to get the job done here, but Max Heydrich won't care about that. No, Max Heydrich won't care, but for me, Korpolinski stands stronger here, Dave. He loves Germany as a circuit. He loves these walled stadiums. It's a very Polish event. I think Korpolinski now sits on the line as a stronger contender going into this battle. And we always know what Max Heydrich, he's going to wow you, he's going to be in the highlight reel or he's going to be in the wall. That's the Max Heydrich way. There is only maximum attack, there yeah. is no holding back. And it's the last event of the year. All these cars are going to leave here like they're you know, going to the scrapyard because they can fix them. They've got six months to fix them. Leave it on the track. It is going to be the first proper battle of our top 32. Poland versus Germany, Heydrich versus Korpolinski. Here we go. Through the gears, Dave. No messing around. Look at the laser focus from Max Heydrich as he stares down at the back end of Korpolinski's S14. Nice initiation from Korpolinski. He's in the wall, though, a little upsell on the steering, but he keeps a hold of it. Heydrich gives him the room to maneuver. They look for that transition. Oh, and Heydrich catches the wall with the front bumper. They get in to outside zone four now. Korpolinski looking more comfortable. So does Heydrich, though, as he tucks up onto the door on the inside. They go for the center of the circuit. Heydrich through the smoke on the transition. And look at this in outside zone five. Korpolinski balances it nicely, but Max Heydrich is right there with him. He makes a big dive at the end onto the back bumper. Well, we start as we mean to go on here in Driftmasters with some heavy hitters on the track and one big heavy hit was Max Heydrich, how he got away with that. He actually tightened up his line behind Korpolinski. Korpolinski goes so close to the wall that Heydrich gets pinned in. The judges warned the drivers about this. Don't get pinned in on that inner zone. How Heydrich got away with that. He had a big thump with the wall there, but he kept it moving in. He certainly did. He knew he had to. He didn't want to let Korpolinski drive away from him and get away. Look at that, the wheel on the wall. And that really, he, that actually forced the car into a transition there, Dave. And I don't think uh, Heydrich was ready to transition the car yet. Look at that, Ooh, boom, wheel on the wall. I mean, this is the only track in world drifting that has this inner wall <laughs> clip. And to be honest, it's my favorite part of the track because it's something we don't see all the time in drifting. Heydrich, you could see when he transitioned, as you said, he had to make the move early, which put him offline. For me, Korpolinski in the lead position, looking super strong, consistent, like he is driving to the shops to get a loaf of bread. He is so calculated around here. However, calculated works in one way. Now you got to be aggressive. Everybody here is qualified above 84 in qualifying. Yep. They all know how to do a lead run. This is the time. But a little bit of an advantage right now. I think Korpolinski, if he can get close, if he can be consistent here, this is going to be his win. But Max Heydrich is going to try and throw a spanner and that works. Yeah, he is going to go for it. Here we go. Nice initiation from Max Heydrich as he flicks the car across the circuit. Late initiation from Pavel Korpolinski now and he gets left a little bit in the smoke from the back end of the German driver's car in an early transition. As you can see, Korpolinski now trying to gain back some of that lost ground. Bumpers flying, wheels into the wall as Heydrich dials on the angle, tries to drive away from Korpolinski and a mistake from Korpolinski straightens through the middle of the circuit. Heydrich looks strong right now, Dave, as he comes through. One last outside time to go. And the German driver looking incredible. Max Heydrich getting right back in this one with a very big lead run. Big angle, more angle than Korpolinski. He was really solid in that lead position. Now, Korpolinski has better proximity throughout the run, but he makes that error in the center of the circuit with a little straight. So we've got a mistake from Heydrich, but that inner clip and transition, we got a mistake from Korpolinski. The judges are going to decipher which was the bigger mistake and who's going to go through. But I just can't. These shots are just incredible. We're in a track that didn't exist 72 it hours ago. It won't exist and it in won't 36 ex hours Yeah, in 36 time. hours, none of this, this stadium will look like none of this ever happened. That is the logistical nightmare that we put ourselves through at Driftmasters, but boy, was it worth it when you see driving like this. Yeah, we're looking at the contact and it was Hydra. So tagged the wall with the wheel. It did upset the line ever so slightly. He does hold on to it. A lot of little technicalities in this one. You can see yeah. Korpolinski just trying to dive through the smoke there. And that's a very dangerous transition across the track. You're going through your own smoke and the other car's smoke into a wall. So it's very difficult. Driver's saying you just got to rely on muscle memory and hope you've remembered where the transition is. If you get it wrong, you can get it wrong in a big way. And we've had a lot of cars in the wall in practice and qualifying. Max Heydrich and Korpolinski. You can see Max Heydrich's bumper flailing behind the car. He gave it everything. They both did. 
Either driver here can leave with their held, uh, head held high because they've done a great job. But every battle in this top 32, Ian, is going to be like a final, and they're treating it like a final. Whatever about the championship, yes, we've got six drivers in that race. But to win the biggest drift event of all time, well, that's almost like a championship in itself. And who will go through automatically to the top eight here? This is a big decision for either driver. Will it be Heinrich? Will it be Korpelinski? The results are going to drop in. And it's Pavel Korpelinski getting the win and going through crazily to the top eight. No opponent in the top 16. In front of his home fans, the Polish flag's waving. We're up and running, and hey, the Polish drivers are going to have all the fans behind them tonight. That may give them that extra push, Ian, to just raise their level a small bit. Yeah, it certainly will. Look, I spoke to the drivers, and they said, you can hear the fans cheering from inside the car. That's how loud these guys are when they start cheering for their favorite driver. And I think Paweł Koblinski is going to hold on to that throughout the rest of this evening. As you can see, those Polish flags, uh, flags flying. And even the youngsters getting involved, Dave, waving the flags. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a spectacle. But here we go. This is the first championship fight battle in the top 32. Juha Rintanen goes up against previous Driftmasters champion Adam Zalewski. Rintanen loses this battle. He is out of the championship race. Zalewski looking for redemption and a Polish driver already through to our top 16. He wants to be there. He is probably, in my opinion, the second best, you know, in terms of trophies, driver ever to come from Poland. If you look at Peter Wiencek as rank number one, but Zalewski wants to get right back up to rank number one. And by doing it tonight, by winning this event, he would be there. Rinton and laser focus. You can see what it means to him. Punching the steering wheel. This is not the time to switch off, to not have focus. This is your whole season on the line. And Rinton and has to go for it because he knows how good Zalewski is. Well, he took a run in for this one, Dave, and you can see Zalewski took a wider line. He wanted to try and get away. But look at that initiation from both of them. Rinton and straight up onto the door. He dives into the pocket. He knows he can't let Zalewski get away. No mistakes need to happen from Rintland's side if he wants any chance of a championship. And now, oh, tags him, tags Zalewski. And Zalewski starts to drive away as now Rintland and gets himself back into it. But could this be too much? Could he have lost it all already? Could he have thrown the battle away as Zalewski gets into those last two outside zones and takes it across the line? Yeah, I'm not too sure if Juha Rinton took, you know, too much of a bite of the apple there and went too close to Zalewski. But Zalewski looked to me like he was on a pretty good lead run there. Now, we're going to have a look at it again. We obviously have to analyze all of these runs. They mean so much, and the judges have so much technology now to analyze from inside the car, from outside the car. They've, they can use any camera in this stadium to have a replay on, but I want to see what happened here. We were business as usual from the first corner. You can see that Juha Rinton, he knew he had to get that proximity. He goes real tight to Adam Zalewski, and as they transition back, everything looked pretty good. And I'm wondering, does Zalewski just stay on full throttle? We don't know. Let's see what happens. Zalewski goes into the corner. Rintanen comes in. He's on the brakes, Rintanen, on the left foot brake. As we come through here, watch Zalewski's car. Oh, he comes off. Oh, throttle. he comes off throttle. It looks to me like Zalewski backs off. And on initial viewing, it yeah. looked to me like Rintanen took too much out of that. But watch the transition here. Zalewski should be on full throttle now. No smoke from the back wheels. Look, locks up. Well, he lifts. Watch this, Dave. You yeah. can see the smoke. Look. Yeah, he lifts he off. He knew he was going He's to go going in the wall. wall. So Zalewski's going in the wall. He backs off. And I think you can see. The Rintanen's taillights, watch, he is on the front brake here. He is going as slow as he can in the chase position. Zalewski goes wide. He, back, look, back. he already starts to turn out. If you watch the front wheels, Dave, he already I starts he to shut up I think he yeah. hits the wall. I think Zalewski hits the wall there. You can see some movement in the car. You can see Rintanen is just trying to back and off that one. Contact. Yeah, and he hits Zalewski and hits the wall. Well, it's going to be the finest of margins tonight, I believe. And then Rintanen, of course, here does a little bit of a uh, clipping the grass and uh, just tries to keep in the battle. And this, every battle, if you've been watching Driftmasters all year, every battle now is so tense. It's knife edge. I because mean, we, we you might be in the top 32, Ian, but to them, every battle is a final. This is a final battle. Every battle is a final battle. We always say, we, are we being too critical as commentators? Um, but I think we have to be. We have to, 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 you know, point out the finest margins because these guys are, you know, pushing to the limit. So there we go. You can see Adam Zalewski back on the line, ready to sit in that chase position. So I mean, we're, we're close to the judges. We can't hear everything they're saying, but quite. it looked to me like there was quite a bit of agreement there on who was at fault, and it looked to me like a lot of the blame being put on Adam Zalewski for that manoeuvre. Um, you know, we're commentating there, judging on the far side. We, we don't have any communication directly no. on Wednesday we wanted, but usually you can tell by the body language if there's an argument. Um, it means there's a split decision when they're all kind of nodding along. You can tell that they are looking at that decision. And, and you know, we're commentating here, like you guys are sitting at home watching this, with a, you know, an eye for the entertainment level. But the technical level that they judge this on is so far beyond that. And they've had such long briefings, over three hours of briefings this weekend. So the drivers know exactly what's going on. We know a bit, 
but we'll obviously be able to ask the judges what the decision is so they'll know referring to those technical decisions and uh you know what, there's uh, just going to take a little bit of dust out of the carpet here on the middle, <laughs> in the middle of the track. And uh, there is such new challenges with this event because, uh, remember, this is none of this existed. These walls, these catch fences, the stages, the lights, the pyro, the grass in the middle of the area. Nothing here Nothing was here, no. on Tuesday. No, it's just here, a flat tarmac area. A flat concrete area on Tuesday with nothing in it. And here we have a full racetrack in the stadium just four days later. Incredible stuff. You can see the Irish fans, the Finnish fans and the Polish fans. Well, they all know that tonight could be their night. Two Finnish drivers, two Irish drivers, one Polish driver, I believe. And well, maybe three Irish drivers, depending on how things go. But it's, it's going to come down to that battle of nations. And you can see the flags around the stadium. There are big groups of fans getting together to cheer their drivers on. Rintanen just checking to see if his car is OK after. Oh, OK. OK, so we've just heard word that Rintanen is going to be granted a competition timeout, meaning the fault of the incident going to Adam Zalewski, and therefore Rintanen allowed some time to check his car over. Now, if you're in the championship fight and you're in a ball track with no runoff, that's exactly what you're doing. Just go make sure that car is 100% if you're allowed. Well, you certainly are, and especially for Rintman, Dave. He's in that championship fight, so he's going to want to make sure that car is 100%. And he knows as well that he may have an advantage against Zalewski, which he now 100% knows he has a, a yeah, he'll, advantage he'll know that because he's been it. Yeah, he'll know that he has got a huge advantage. So we move on to our next battle. Champions versus champions versus champions. We talk about it as the Champions League of Drifting, and this is what it is. We had 25 national champions in the 57 drivers uh, that, uh, that we've had so many event winners. If you were to put all the trophies from these 57 drivers that started this weekend together, you'd probably fill half the stadium. But these guys are going head to head, and this is an interesting one. You've got Alex Holovnia from the Ukraine. And I'll tell you one thing, really good at qualifying. Looked phenomenal in that F22 uh, carbon Kevlar BMW. But he goes up against what I call one of the wildest drivers on the grid right now, 15-year-old Itay Sadaf from Israel. An Israeli driver took down Jack Shanahan in the last event in Germany, and Ian, our mouths were open. 15-year-old beats the current championship leader and knocks him out. And here's some other interesting facts. Any driver that's entered around this year as the championship leader has not left as the championship leader. Connor Shannon looking to break that. Um, curse, I guess, curse, yep. tonight. But it tastes of that. He's on bonus time here, and he's going up against another heavyweight in Ukrainian, Alex Olovnia. Well, I've got some news for you. Because our lady on the ground, Mrs. Uh, Becky Evans, has just messaged me and said, Ite Sada has just said to her, the car's not 100%. I'm not sure it'll even work for the run. Well, this is just, we were talking about this, you know, during practice and qualifying. It's a tough track on the cars. The reason being so much full throttle, because your, your gear wheel speed is set to maximum attack all the way around, you very little airflow. So you're not picking up huge amounts of speed to cool the car down. No. The heat, and also remember, these cars have traveled around five different grueling events. They are held together with hopes and dreams. And there's no point in making them look pretty when you're coming in here. So it takes it out saying the car, maybe not 100%, doesn't look 100% confident in the car. Yeah, you can see the faces see down. The Bit. Yeah. But hey, stranger things have happened as the taste of that now will take on Alex Holovnia. And Alex Holovnia, he could be a shark in the water tonight. He is a guy that once he's on form, very hard to stop. Certainly so. When he sits in the lead position, you can see Ite Sadar now creeping up, looking to jump that start line, which he can do as the chase driver come through. And look at this already, Ite Sadar trying to find the back bumper of that FW, uh, F22 BMW. As they fire through, they pick up the inside zone. And now Ite Sadar looks like the car's working 100% as he jumps onto the back bumper, onto the door. Alex Olovnia gets into that long outside zone form, he tags the wall, he upsets the line. You can see Ite, though, way from that wall, out of the line, trying to shortcut the circuit, trying to gain some proximity back. We know that Holovnia is fast, and look at this, as they both get into the wall, they both affect the steering. Now Holovnia starts to pull away, but he's in the wall yeah. multiple times. I was times. just going to say, he's taken too much out of that Holovnia, he's smashed the wall over the finish line, that's damage to the car. Bad, and yeah. I'm going to explain that to you if you're a new time, uh, first time Driftmasters viewer, that there's no, you know, breaks or five minute rules here or way to go fix the car. You have two minutes to get back to the start line, and I'm thinking Alex Holovnia may not be able to go back to that start line. He has smashed the wheel on that car, and it's, look at that transition from Ite Seda. It was absolutely outrageous on the inner zone. That said, he cuts a lot of track to get yeah. there throughout the rest of the run. Looks to me like he's down a little on pace. Holovnia hits the wall quite a few times over this run, but it's over that finish line. He's done damage to the car. You can see bits of the wheel flying off, justifying the, uh, the five empty seats, or uh, five empty rows uh, around the stadium for debris and those catch fences, but I have a feeling that Alex Holovnia may not be able to continue here because of damage to the car. Watch, that's oh, pieces yeah, of the, the wheel, wheel flying up into the air. 
And if his wheel is destroyed, that means he won't be able to fix it. And that would put a taste of that into the, there you have it. Facts and figures on the screen for you guys. Bent suspension, broken wheel, and a de-beated tire. For me, that would put Alex Holovnia out of competition, even though he had the advantage, I would imagine, from that run. That's the kind of night we're having. As a taste of that now sits unconfident at the first run. Now it looks like he's going to take an automatic win here. Well, I mean, yeah, look, five minutes ago, he's telling Becky that I, I don't think the car's even going to make him round. Now he sits in a position where he's into the top 16 automatically because he doesn't have an opponent, you know, fouled out of competition, does Alex Olovnia. Now, it's a sort of, theoretically, again, it goes back to the whole initiation. All he has to do is initiate and, and drift past to that first corner, and he's automatically through to the top and 16. look, at, this guy is cooler than the other side of the pillow right now. He's just sitting in there chilling. I just, you know, I just beat <laughs> massive Ukrainian champion Alex Olovnia. I'm just going to do a little initiation and just wave to the fans because, you know, I'm 17 from Israel, and here I am at the biggest stadium in Poland. Just beat people. That's what I do. He is going to be one to watch, I think. This is his yeah. first season in Driftmasters. He's already taken down Jack Shannon in Germany. Now he's taken down Alex Solovnia here in the stadium. How far will he go tonight? We don't know. Well, you, I don't know. And, and you know what people keep asking me? What's your predictions? How do you feel today's going to go? As soon as we walked into this arena two days ago, I said, this could be somewhere special. Things are going to happen on Saturday afternoon that we, we never thought would happen. And I mean, already, already just look at what's happened. Well, right now, through the first couple of battles, we haven't... I mean, we've got Rinton in with an advantage on Zalewski. That's the championship story right now. We didn't even have a battle between Rova Pera and Randalu because Rova Pera's car blows an oil pump, or an oil pump breaks, maybe an engine, and then Randalu can't even initiate. So nobody wins that battle. Then we have Korpelinski, fair win over Max Heydrich. He goes through, but automatically to the top eight. And then Zalewski and Rinton, we've got to figure out, and then now we just got to taste it out just to initiate on the corner, and he will get the win and go through to the top 16. Imagine at 17 years of age, standing in front of the main event later on, 53,000 people in your first year of professional drifting. Not a bad way to start, right? No, I mean, it's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty big bonus. Well, here he goes, off the line, Dave, and it's a all he needs to do in the judges' eyes is fulfill this initiation and drift the first corner, and it looks like he's going to nail that. And uh, Ite Sada takes a step into the top 16, and I think he's going to put on a bit of an exhibition show here, Dave. Oh, wow! <laughs> Ite Sada. There was absolutely no need. There was need. no reason for that. He moonwalked the car on the inner zone. Did you see that? Uh, what is going on today? He, moon he bumper card. He bumper card off the inner clip. <laughs> if he does this run all night... If you're he not, did this in qualifying? You're not going to beat him. This is insane from a taste, and I thought this was going to be a little wave to the fans. No, I think incredible. this was a test of the car. I think this was a test run of the car to say, is it 100%? Can it do two runs back to back? Well, that's the question. I mean, I'm hoping we get a little replay of that inner zone because that was absolutely outrageous. He bounced off the inner zone um, like he was moonwalking backwards through it. I've never seen anything quite like that. And it tasted out. He's not going to have many headlights or taillights left by the end of the weekend if uh, if that is. Oh, look at this. Look at it. Just he's so calm. Casual. So calm, so casual. A little hamburger. Oh, just going to hit the wall here and there, bounce off it. No, I'm all right. Everything's fine. <laughs> so this, watch this. He moonwalks the car. Watch, the, watch the, the, the language of the car here. He goes in, the car goes backwards. And then he goes forwards again. So not only are we defying what we thought drifting was, but we're defying gravity. <laughs> defying gravity. The laws of physics, the physics have been blown out the window throw them out tonight. the door. I saw someone put them in the bin over there on the front <laughs> row. They said, no, physics, don't need them tonight. So a taste of that is going to get the official win here as the 17-year-old Israeli driver will go through to our top 16. It's made official. He has a quick look under the car and says, yeah, hit that off the wall with the front end. Um, but, I mean, look at the turn of four. I mean, that's a tail of the tape for the rest of the night. Just you can't take your eyes off it because no. you think it's going to be such a predictable night. It is going to be anything but. Is it, it is going to be anything but. Look at the crowds, Dave, as we see shots across. Whoa. And I just looked out the window for the first time since we sat down. And almost every single seat is already filled. I'm, I'm and we are in top 32. We didn't expect to see it at max capacity no. until we got to the top 16 main event. But it's getting very close. And we have got Timo Poltola lining up to the start line with Clint Van Oud. Now, Clint Van Oud put in an incredible qualifying run. He said, I'm here to have fun. I don't care about the championship. I'm just going to do myself proud. But boy, did he do that. But he's up against what I would consider one of the most unpredictable drivers on the grid. Timo Poltola from Finland in this compound turbo diesel Mercedes. So that is a turbo that then feeds air into another turbo. And then a lot of black smoke comes out at the end. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this car has got 1,200 newton meters of torque. Diesel versus petrol in the stadium. I mean, the debate continues. 
But Timo Platono, we said it in yesterday, he said, 15 years ago, I started drifting a diesel BMW. 15 years later, I'm still making the same mistake. <laughs> but he's in the top 32 of the biggest show of the year. But Clint found out if he can re replicate that lead run, the Dutch driver is going to look very strong here. This one, I think, is going to be really interesting. You have two very different styles, two very different machines, and both really want to be in that top 16. They certainly do, Dave. And Clint Van Oort looking for a turn of fortune this year. He said he hasn't had the best year in the Driftmasters European Championship. He said he needed more practice, but he's got to the final round now, and he's found the form. He's found what works for him and the team, and now he's looking stronger than ever. And Timo Patola trying to get as close as he can on that initiation. Clint Van Oort, the Dutch driver, fires in, but the, the Finnish driver not letting him get away now as he fires through that inside zone. Klim Van Oort looks for that front zone, gets it dialed perfectly, but there's no shaking. Timo Patola in that massive Mercedes-Benz touring as they fire through outside zone four. There is no way that Klim Van Oort can escape the massive power and torque and everything from the diesel is just putting him right where he needs to be. Klim Van Oort holds on to it in that long outside zone six, but Patola is with him. That is a hell of a battle. Wow. When you look at it on paper, two guys that have never faced off before, two machines that should never be seen together, and they put on a clinic in the lead and chase there. I'm going to hold my hands up here and just say, I'm a big Clint Van Oort fan. You know, I'm good friends with him behind the scenes. I thought he was going to walk away with this one, but Peltola proved me wrong. I'll be 100%. I watched some practice runs from Peltola earlier today, and I said, he hasn't made a huge impact in the battles yet, but he's got the talent. I saw some chase runs and said, he's feeling it here tonight. He's feeling this track. That was a highlight reel battle in our top 32 between two guys that have been waiting all year to show what they can do. And boy, did they. Clint Van Oud's car is absolutely wrecked. <laughs> wrecked. Every corner of that car is wrecked from trying so hard on this track. And it still looks good from about 40 feet. But when you get up close, it is held together with blue tack, Luck. sellotape, cable ties, and dreams. That's all that's <laughs> holding that car together. Locked front wheel there from Clint Van Oud as he left foot brakes around the corner. And this one is very much in the balance. Yeah, Clint Van Oud right now needs to park that yellow Nissan 200SX S14 on the door of Peltola's Mercedes-Benz. Otherwise, this one could easily get away from him. And we know that Peltola's a showman. He loves to put on a show. But he he needs to be very, very careful right now as we try and remove the back end of Klim Van Oort's Nissan. You there is not that, much right? left of that back end right no. now. So our Starline Marshal, just to give you guys an update on the rules and regulations, they can make aesthetic changes. And right now he is literally That's angle grinding drastic to take that up. He's got time, he's got to get this car going. And Clint Van Oort, if you told him you're cutting half the car off, he's like, cut it, cut it, Do cut it. it. Yep. This is, it doesn't matter. That's what it's all about, getting out in that battle. Look how he's positioned himself. Yeah, Clint Van Oort doing something pretty scary here. He's going for a very unusual run in. And he's trying to shortcut chase. that corner. He's trying to shortcut the corner in the chase position. This is all legal. Yeah. Yeah, there are no rules of where they have to start any starting position. They can't start bumper to bumper. They do no, have to start. I think start this, this is either going to work really well or really bad for Clint Van Oort. I think Clint Van Oort's onto something here. He would have been watching a lot of practice. He's a very technical guy. He would have watched a lot of people and seen what everyone else was doing. And so they're off the line. Peltola to lead in. Clint Van Oort right now. Van Oort on the back bumper. Nice initiation from Peltola. And Clint Van Oort needs to find the pocket. He can't let that Mercedes Benz get away. And now he's in the smoke, the black and white smoke. You can't even see him as they transition through the center of the circuit. Clint Van Oort looks for the door. Of Peltola, but Peltola on an absolute flyer, but he tags the wall and upsets the steering, keeps a hold of it, but that opens the door for Clint Van Oort. They come through the touch and go. Clint Van Oort loses some ground in the smoke, now finds his way back in, but it was a shallow line in outside zone five for Peltola. But look at Clint Van Oort blowing the doors off the Mercedes Benz. Strong finish. And I mean that in all the right parts from both of these drivers. I'm just looking at Peltola's lead run. There's some errors there, there's some miss yeah. miss zones. I'm just going to see, I mean, Clint Van Oort losing, I think Peltola definitely having the better proximity over the first half of the course. And I thought at this moment here that Peltola was going to walk away and win this one, but he does make some errors, two major ones for me. They're coming up just in a moment. He tags the wall really heavy when he comes towards outer zone three. Watch this, as he comes through, Hits yeah, and that, four, and yeah, Clint Van four. Now, here's the other one. I think he misses the touch and go on the inside of the track as well. Watch that white box that's a, it's just missing there on the, on the angle. But I think he misses that touch and go on the inside quite heavily too. Yeah, and I agree because you can see the line he took to outside zone five. He didn't get it early. He kind of triangulated the bottom half of the circuit. And that really opened the door for uh, Clint Van Oort because he got right up in the pocket. Look, Look at, at this. this. Clint Van Oort is pushing him with I, the foot brake I'm, I'm just going to say to you guys, are you not entertained? 
We promised a lot, we hyped a lot. Look at the delivery. That is drifting. You're seeing it on your screen right now. That's why we do what we do, because these guys go out there every month and put on an incredible show, whether they're at the bottom of qualifying to the top of the championship leaderboard. They fight tooth and nail for every result. Which result will go for Peltola or for Clint Van Oud? It's Holland. <laughs> versus Finland, and they are having an absolute blast either way. Look at the smiles think, on faces. I think Clint Van Orp forgot there was people here. And, Clint Van Orp got out of the car and went. Timu, looked, Timu he, was like, have a look, just have a look. I think Clint Van Orp went, I don't want to look up before this. It was too nerve-wracking. Look around at this stadium. And the gladiators that are within this stadium, you can see those almost uh, gladiatorial catch fences all the way around. And almost every seat now full in the stadium as Peltola and Clint Van Out wait for the result. And this is a nervous one. Who's going through to the top 16? It's a one more time. It's a one more time. They get to go back at it again. And I've never seen somebody celebrate a draw as, as, as hyped as that. God, I love a good draw. The two boys want to go back at it again. I'm going to go quickly over to you, Kevin, just for a moment. Couldn't separate them. No, we couldn't because for anybody that isn't familiar with how we judge here in Drift Masters, we judge lead to lead and chase to chase. And you would be, say it from looking at the first run there that Timu had a huge advantage. He was absolutely all over the door of Clint, uh, a phenomenal chase run. But you also have to look at the lead run of Clint where it was absolutely clinical, almost a 95 point qualifying run, I would say. Then you switch him around then and Timu made a host of mistakes on his lead run, uh, as you guys pointed out, hitting the wall at outer zone four, making a couple of mistakes, not being deep in the zones that we were looking for and therefore he didn't give Clint the opportunity to chase as cleanly so for me Clint won the lead team won the chase we have to see it go one more time makes perfect sense to me Kevin and uh, I'm not complaining that was a no. hell of a battle I'm looking forward to seeing those boys go back at it again Paltola and uh, Clint Van Oud will uh, it looks to me like Paltola uh, not leaving the circuit um, so Paltola has decided to drive this sweeper truck instead <laughs> Obviously not, but there's a. I mean, there might be some leak or something. Yeah, from Montola, it's, sorry. Uh, I think it's a there's slight. still black smoke uh, just you know, petering out of Peter, the top. Yeah, there he's the trying chimney. to get it started. He calls it an exhaust, let's be honest. It's, it's a, a chimney. chimney. It's yeah. a chimney. No, he's good. He said thumbs up, everything seems to be okay. Um, a very crazy setup being on that car. Not, not something you could go to another pit area and say, hey, what are you guys doing with this? Do you, have you had any spares? He's got a very sp specific design that he, he has to bring everything for his own car where he can't, um, you know, rely on some friends in the paddock to have spare parts. Uh, I do believe there was a, an ever so slight coolant leak on that car. Yeah, but coolant better than oil. And yeah. uh, the sweepers just had to make sure the conditions are perfect. And obviously it's on initiation there, so we're going to sweep that one up. And we can move on then shortly to the second half of a championship battle between Juha Rinton and Adam Zalewski. Remember, we go back a couple of moments, it was Zalewski hitting the wall, coming off throttle, causing Rinton to back out. Rinton and gets the uh, competition timeout for the reason that he was not at fault, which we now know officially because of that decision yeah. that the fault was on Adam Zalewski, which means all Rinton has to really do here is just put in a clean run. But it's easier said than done. You right? make it sound like they're just going to go to the shops for some grocery oh. shopping, Dave. It's, it, that is not easy on this circuit. You know, when the best of the best tell you it's a tricky track and it's only getting harder by the more grip that's laid down. We can see there's quite a um, coolant leak there from Timo Pozzola. Yeah, coolant obviously a little bit easier to clean up than oil. Oil is yeah. the worst, but it, it's something that the, the marshals here want to make sure is 100%, of course, on hold for the moment. But um, just as you mentioned, it's uh, you are written. You know, you talk about just do a clean lap, right? Just why not just do it? But then Oliver Randall didn't even have an opponent and he couldn't beat an invisible opponent yeah. because he couldn't initiate because the car didn't work. That shows how unpredictable it is. And also the machinery that we're using here, these cars are really pushed to the limit. Ian, you know, you work in that, in that business, fabrication and building drift cars. They are pushed to the absolute limit of what a mechanical entity can do for 50 seconds or a minute and anything one small component gives up that's the end of your day oh 100 percent like these cars are pushed to the limit and beyond and and you know when you get six rounds into a championship dave these guys have traveled all around europe and as much as they can do maintenance on the road maintenance at, at garages across europe on their route round you know there's still there's tiny little things we've seen it so much this weekend already with connor shanahan having problems and and as you say yeah i work in that industry um nine to five this is it, this isn't just my only job. I do build drift cars at nine to five, and 
you know, I see it time and time again. One small thing can let you down, and that could be the end of the weekend. Absolutely. But of course, we could just sit here doing nothing while we're waiting for the track to be cleaned up, or we could have the largest Mexican wave in drifting, which has now been running around the stadium continuously for the last five or ten minutes. The audience here, the, the fans, absolutely pumped up for this one, Ian. They are the stars of the show. While they won't be on the screens other than this, they are really the reason this event is happening. And, and we're so proud of all of these different nations and Poland and everyone involved for coming together to make this a reality. It's just an awesome time for the sport. Look at these scenes. Uh, Dave, I, I mean, <laughs> we expected top 16 this to be... I mean, I'm looking around and there's probably a couple of hundred seats empty at the moment where people are obviously still making their way to the arena for top 16. This is insane. I have never seen this many people at a drift event in my life. Well, that's because there hasn't been this many people at a drift event before. And of course, we got some of our uh, halftime show coming up later on, but the guys are out just doing a little bit. I mean, this is stuff you can do, Ian, right? This is easy to do. Oh, yeah, I mean, I was yeah. doing that last night on the uh, electric, you know, scooter. electric rent a scooter. We did that across town. Yeah, we, we, we were just, you know, doing backflips. We were yeah, doing one yeah. hand. Yeah, the, that's really We didn't easy. get any video footage, you know. No, just got to trust no, us no. on it. We were doing this, but there are some very talented uh, motorcycle rides. And there's a guy over there sparking the back of the bike off the ground. This is so cool. So I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw back down to Becky. I want to know what the feeling's like in the pits. Bex, you're with Pavel Korpelinski. He's through, not only to the 16, but it looks like he's through to the top eight. Absolutely, Dave. We were just having this chat right now. I said, Korpelinski, you must be delighted. I mean, not only are you at the biggest drift event ever, you've just got yourself straight through to top eight. When you were having that battle just there, were you thinking, I just need to get through top 32? Well, I didn't know that uh, it's going to be like that, so I I'm super happy. Uh, I couldn't be more happy, to be honest, and uh, yeah, the atmosphere is great. Uh, I was really stressed before my top 32 battle, but uh, it, it went uh, our way, so uh, I was really happy to be in top 16, and uh, as, it's, uh, uh, as it looks now, I'm uh, going straight to the paid. So yeah, it feels even, uh, even better, and uh, yeah, it seems to be that the luck is on my side for once. I always think with drifting, I think there's a degree of luck which comes to winning. Obviously, there's so much skill involved, but this time the gods have really looked down and you said, yeah, this is great. Walking around this event, do you feel like this is a real moment in time for drifting? Oh, yes, it's it, it's amazing. It's uh, the biggest, biggest uh, drifting event in the history of, of, the, of the sport. So, uh, yeah, it's it's huge. It's uh, it's unbelievable to uh, to be in front of 55,000 people and the 55,000 people are watching you and watching uh, all the other drivers compete. So, yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's an unbelievable experience. How long have you been drifting for now to find yourself in this position? Uh, since 2015, so eight years. Eight years and this is the culmination. Yeah. Are you are you happy about that? Oh, I'm super happy. I'm super happy. It's it's a long way we as uh, drift drivers have gone through, and uh, it finally pays back. Absolutely. Congratulations, and we'll see you in the top eight. Thank you. Lads, back to you. Thanks, Becky. Yeah, and there we go. We can see uh, the scenes from that battle of. Um, uh, Max Heydrich and Pavel Korbelinski and Korbelinski getting that win, moving through. And you can see there, the little tags on the walls, the back ends of those cars, looking battered and bruised, and they'll get worse and worse as the evening goes on, and these guys fight it out for a spot on the top step of the podium. And obviously two podiums this weekend to crown. We have our round winner, and we also have our champion podium winner, which will be decided under the lights here in Warsaw. As the track cleanup continues, we can yeah, see the road to uh, one of the marshals just while Becky was interviewing Pavo, and it's in a water pump just exploded on the car. So water on the track, so not too bad, but it's a water pump explosion, meaning it's not too slippery. They just want to dry it up so the sweeper can uh, do a little bit of sweep. Johnny sweeps, he's out there. Do you like a his, sweeper? I, I do. You're a big fan of this that. guy. He might be the slowest guy around the track this weekend, <laughs> but he might be the most important. Yeah, he certainly is going to be the most important, Dave, that's for sure, as we can see that uh, trail of water now getting removed from the circuit, and we look forward to seeing Juhar Ritten and Adam Zalewski second half of the battle coming up. Yeah, rumour has it he's come a long way in Poland. It took him six weeks to get here at this speed, um, and he's still driving through the track. So we have got a, a big cleanup on track. And you know what? We want to have a talk with uh, some more drivers that are down the pits hanging around. He didn't quite make it through, Becky, but Oran Nielsen's enjoying the action. Uh, he's, I would say he's true into the top 32, but he's enjoying the action from outside the stadium, but he hasn't seen much of what's inside. He must be excited. Absolutely, Dave. I just came over to speak to Oran Nielsen right now, and I tried to open the door, and I have to take a look at this car, Oran. It's had a tough season. I can't even open the door. The, the roof, talk us through some of the damage that this car, I mean, is it time for a rebuild? 
Yeah, maybe it is. Uh, I've had this car since I was 16 and I'm 28 now, so uh, it's been through me for thick, thick and thin. The roof, it's mostly uh, damaged, but the rest of the car is actually uh, very good working. Uh, so the car feels very good considering what it's been through, rolling two times in Sweden. Uh, we actually made it to the race in Finland like just weeks after it, so I just have to thank my team for that. Uh, we'll see what we do with the car. I, you have to understand, guys sitting at home, this guy has been through it all. I mean, a roll, crashes, and you've always come back for more. What are your hopes for this event? So for today, I just really want to be a part of the show this night. I want to experience the crowd, like the atmosphere of 55,000 55, people. It's just mental, so I just hope I can beat Kevin now. I'm gonna push really hard and we'll see. I'll I'm just gonna have fun. That's the main thing, to have fun. Thank you so much, Oren, and good luck. Thanks, Becky. I'll tell you what, having fun. I mean, they're enjoying the occasion, but they're competitors at the end of the day and they all want to get to the final. And the main event for me, under the lights, when we go from the daylight to the nighttime here, there is a huge surprise for everybody who's watching on. Everything. <laughs> you need to stop giving them I'm away. I'm just saying, David. there's a surprise We're not going to tell you anything anymore. Nope. Because you keep, we, we give you this information and then you go, ah, you, you, want, you just I, want to tell everyone. I want to tell everyone what's about to happen later on tonight. Yeah, when we go to, a, that's a surprise. That's the surprise. So you do not miss that top 16. There's a lot of things going to happen. We're going to ramp things up here as we go through the competition. Um, unfortunately, we can't get any more speed out of the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the sweeper that they've been looking at the logs on, on the map and the ECU. This is as fast, as, as, it fast go. as it goes. Yeah. yeah so, but, but the idea here is just it's water, so it's not super slippery, but it's just to make sure the conditions on the track are 100% for every single driver because it means so much to each driver. You can't just say, ah, whatever, it'll be fine. You have to make sure that course conditions are perfect. And as you can see, um, the amount of rubber that the sweeper yeah, is picking up on its tires wheels, yeah. from the drift cars leaving it around the edge of the circuit. And a lot of drivers saying that they're going out there shredding tires and coming back in with more rubber than they went out with because they're picking up all that excess as they go through the course. And you know what? We, the championship fight, he's at the end of the first half of the bracket and a man who's fighting from the back, Becky, but he still has a shot tonight is Dwayne McKeever. Is he thinking about the championship or is it just about having fun tonight? I think it's all about having fun, to be honest, Dave. I was just having a chat with Dwayne here, and we were talking about his cars. And what you guys have to understand is these cars go through a lot of war over a season of Drift Masters. Tell me, how long have you had this car and been competing with it, Dwayne? So this car is like five, six years old now. Uh, but technically, I've been driving this shell, this type of shell from Dead Data. It's the only Drift car, professional shell I've ever had. I was going to change it years ago, and then everyone told me that I would silly to do that, so I never bothered. But yeah, look, I think this, this and me is just, it's my match of the drift car, so I'll probably never change this. You'll probably see me for the rest of my life in one of these. So you'll always be a 180 guy. This car will stay with you to the very end. Now, let's look at the championship. Technically, you're still in the fight for the top spot. Are you going to push it all the way this evening? Look, it wouldn't matter if I was a wild card here this weekend. I'd be coming here to win, like, you know, take it round by round. As I heard what somebody else say during the weekend, to even win this event would be like winning a championship this event is absolutely massive here if you come here in a wild card and you won here this weekend and uh driver won the championship i think you're up in the same place to be honest because this is this unbelievable out there and the crowd that's here and the, it's just the i don't even lost for i'm actually the atmosphere that's what i said that's the word I'm looking for it. yeah I'm just i'm lost for words of how good it is and yeah i can't wait to get out in track it's a big moment, Dwayne. Good luck in your top 32 battle. And guys, I'm going to hand it back up to you. Is that track ready yet? Well, the sweeper hasn't picked up any pace in the meantime, Becky. It's still running at three miles an hour, but he's getting there. He's, he's almost done a lap. Um, and uh, Kevin O'Connell has scored him a zero for lacking an initiation into the first corner. So he's already on yeah. a zero. He got no angle. He got either. zero angle, zero, zero angle. impact. So he's not scoring well right now. The line isn't terrible, but, but very slow. <laughs> Uh, very slow. He's getting to the zones. He's getting into the zone. So the fans anxiously waiting for the action to kick back off again. It will be Juha Rinton and Adam Zalewski to finish that championship final. And I'm looking at Dwayne McKeever there, you know, a guy who isn't usually overwhelmed by the occasion, but running out of words to describe what we're seeing here tonight. And it is special. And it's a celebration of the drift uh, community in Europe. And, you know, very much the underdog, you know, for many years in the, in the global scale and tonight just emerging. And, and there's a lot of work that's gone in behind the scenes from multiple national championships, multiple drivers, you know, organizations, sponsors, everything, teams, the amount of, all these drivers would have had blind faith 
when they stepped into Driftmasters, they never knew something like this would happen. So it's a reward for that blind faith and keeping, you know, maybe when the times are tough, you look at Oren Nielsen rolling cars, doing McKeever engines blowing, Connor Shannon, no practice, swapping engines overnight. It means that much to them. And it, they were going to fight that hard, whether there was 55,000 here or five people here. And this is why these crowds come to watch them, because it's do or die. They want to be the best, but behind the scenes, they're there as a community, knowing that each one of them is probably as stupid as the next doing this sport and it's sort of uh, I think if you're surrounded by people doing stupid things you feel less stupid right <laughs> so at the end of the day amazing to see how far this sport has come if you think about it the hills of Japan in the late 70s and 80s a couple of guys just skidding some cars if you were to tell those guys now that you know 30 years later there would be a full stadium full of people watching the hobby and then the sport that they created I think it's mind-blowing oh it certainly is mind-blowing Dave and you know what it, it gives you goosebumps every time we look out the window here in our commentary booth we can see right across the whole arena and it is just absolutely mind-blowing. It, it doesn't make sense to some degree. I kind of walked in earlier to, to get ready for this Top 32 competition and I thought, is this real life? Because you'd never dream it. You know, we, me and you, we started this 10 plus years ago. We, we've, been, we've been commentating to, you know, 50 people, yeah. 70 people at an event at times. And, and to see how far it's coming, you know, it, it's, a, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of amazing drivers coming together at the same time. It's an amazing organization that brought the best from media to production to, to teams together. This was a collaboration of everybody in Europe who loved drifting coming together with one common goal. And I think tonight, of all nights is the time to celebrate how far we've all come and you know to the fans watching on to the fans here in attendance they're the reason pushing this if we keep supporting this sport look what can be done it's amazing this is people power this is crowd funded this is what dreams are made of and right now the sweeper has said i've run out of diesel i've done too many laps of the track now it's time and timo potola is too busy to give them any so it's going to be uh yuha rintanen and adam zalewski to warm up and remember rintanen in the championship fight but very much in it with a huge advantage after the first run. Yeah, huge advantage. Now he has to lay down a lead line that would match his qualifying run and hope that Zalewski can't really try and overturn that. But for me, written and needs to be clinical. He can't make any mistakes. He can't tag the wall. He can't go in too hot. He needs to be super, super careful here, but also lay down a lead line that the judges deem is exactly what they wanted. It has to be chaseable. And also, from Yuha Rinton's point of view, that he's in the best position here because he can just do his own thing. He's got to forget about Adam Zalewski, forget there's a chase car there at, at any time, and just get the job done. Adam Zalewski, though, not easy to forget <laughs> that he's there because he's going to be putting marks all over that. you got two generations of uh, Toyota here as they take off the line. Same engine though as they come off the line it's going to be you are into oh Zalewski tipping the grass on the way and he wants this one he's putting on a show here Zalewski's going right in deep and up onto the door he goes Zalewski trying to force a mistake from you how written as written it on rails not risking anything on angle there just keeping it nice and smooth as Zalewski oh. tags the door heavy of you how written and Zalewski's trying to force a mistake from the lead car it's the only way he's going to get back into this fight expects Zalewski to go very close here and he does he's pushing written into the wall as they come around but written and holds strong the the flying fin looks like he's got the job done. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable, Dave. Yuha Rittenden was taking hits to the door. He was getting pushed across the circuit, and he held his call. He held on to it. He didn't get phased whatsoever, and I don't think, really, there were too many mistakes in there from Rittenden to overturn anything. Look at the aggression on initiation from Adam Zalewski. He didn't mess around. He knew he had to be up onto the rear pocket. He knew he had to be there with Rittenden, but Rittenden is a stone-cold flying fin. We know those guys. When they're in the car and the visor drops down, all it is is business and written and got the job done you know what that's you gotta say it that's what a champion would do yep he would go out there under the pressure under the lights under all the eyes and just concentrate leaves their focus on getting the job done i think he's got the job done zalewski though he's trying everything he has in his locker to make a mistake he's like just make a mistake i'll hit you i'll push you i'll be in the transitions but from where i'm sitting right now it looks to me like you how rinton has got the job done and that is at this point in time, one of our championship contenders into the top 16. Fight still very alive for Yuha Rinton. I think Zalewski, with the, uh, the body language there, loves to be out in front of his home fans, but I think he's going to know. He's an experienced pro here. He's going to know that this is not going to go in his direction. And it is indeed Yuha Rintanen from Finland getting the win. The dream continues. He doesn't show, you know, huge emotion, Yuha Rintanen. He likes to stay relaxed, not get caught up in the moment. You know, if you look at some other drivers on the grid, they're very emotionally driven. Rintanen's very like, you know what? I'm just going to get my job done, quietly go about my business. And he's been doing that all season. He might not be the most exciting sometimes, but he's also creeping through these battles and being consistent. And sometimes consistency wins out in the end. I said this earlier 
earlier on this morning, Dave Tew, and we jumped in the rental car to come to the track. Rindon's that kind of guy that will be consistent round on round. He'll chip away at the points, he'll get the top four finishes, he'll get the top eight finishes. And before you know it, he'll be in that top six at the end of the year, fighting for a championship without you even really realising it. And I think tonight is going to be the same. He's going to stay quiet, he's going to stay in the background, but slowly work his way through to the final four. And I would not be surprised if he's on the podium at the end of the evening. Absolutely, as we move on to our next battle, it is going to be Kuba Piszkowski representing Poland, another hometown hero here in Poland. Going up against the wild man from Portugal, Diogo Correa. What's he going to do? Nobody ever knows. He's got a Mercedes <laughs> 3.2 liter turbo engine. He's the only one running. He got a BMW, I didn't even put a BMW in it, or a Japanese engine. He decided, no, I'm going to put a Mercedes engine in there. And it works really well. And Correa has seen a podium this year already. Piszkowski hasn't, but this is the one Piszkowski wants. He wants the hometown win. He's got to podiums before in these stadium events. He's definitely going to be tough to beat. I would say going into this battle on current record, you've got Correa, who has an up and down season. He's got a podium, but then he's also struggled. piszkowski has been there all along. But Piszkowski needs to push a little bit further now to get into the later stages of competition. This one is going to be a 50-50 affair. It certainly is going to be a 50-50 affair. Well, look, the higher qualifier, Kuba Buschkotsky, sits in that lead position. They get ready to come off the line, but we know Diogo Correa is going to want this. He's going to be hungry for it. But he has all the Polish fans behind him, just Buschkotsky right now, as he fires through a big flick across the circuit. And an early initiation from Diogo Correa as he now leaves a little bit of ground between him and Buschkotsky. They come through to the two inner zones as Buschkotsky doesn't risk anything, doesn't want to put the car at risk. And look at this from Correa. He now starts to close a gap, a little tag on to the door, he says, I don't care if it's all blue carbon fibre, I'm going to take a bite out the side of it. They come through the centre of the circuit and Correa goes for it. Correa goes for a big lunge, big dive onto the door and outside zone five, but he needs to be careful. He's letting Pruszkowski drive away. You know what, there was a dive through the transition from Correa there, which I'm pretty sure he didn't even know was going to work out. He took a risk, it paid off, it was beautiful. He made it work, but what a great lead run from Kuba Pruszkowski. He did exactly what the judges wanted him to do. He filled all the zones, completed everything, no major waivers, and Correa doing a great job of tucking up on the inside. But as you said, it looked like Kuba had a little bit more pace than Correa, but it, to me, it looked like Correa was on a little bit more angle at times as well. As they come through this touch and go, the inside uh, clip here, I love this shot. Look at this, two cars drifting at a concrete wall directly. Doesn't make sense, doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> Strift Masters, ladies and gentlemen. Kuba Pushkowski laser focused in that lead car as Diogo Correa starts to creep up onto the door. And look, Correa losing a little bit of ground here as they come through, but watch this transition. This, to me, is the highlight reel. Look, boom, through, up onto the door. Correa starts to make the, the issue felt. He knows, I've got to do something as an exclamation mark. And look at Pushkonski, starting to get a little bit of an angle here on this first corner. And I think Pushkonski's going to know from his spotters, spotters are the guys that are watching from the outside, informing the drivers. He's going to say, look, Correa was good. He was close. You've got to go closer. He has to go closer. He has to have that box. I mean, I think that's the only thing that's going to separate this battle. They get ready to come off the line. There we go. Light goes green. The gears drop as they come down. And look at this straight line dive from Pushkonski. He's on the door. He tags Correa as Correa now gets forced out of outside zone one early. And that can upset his line as he goes very close to the wall. Pushkonski lost in the smoke. He now starts to lose a lot of ground to Diogo Correa as Correa starts to fire away. But look at Pushkonski in the inside edge of the circuit. He's shortcutting the track to gain that proximity. And now Correa absolutely drives away into outside zone five, and once again, Pichonski having the shortcut, he makes a dive, but I think it's all over for the Polish. No, this is incredible to watch. You know what, Ian, I'm going to commend you, because you spent all that run talking. My mouth was dropped. <laughs> I could not say a word. Did you see the bump, and Correa goes in, look at this, he gets hit, and then he just floors it, both of them stay in it, and Correa says, oh, you want to play games? Follow this transition, and he puts the nose of that BMW on the wall, and that's where Pushkonski gets unwound. Yep. He's not expecting this. Look at Correa, inches from the wall, Pushkonski goes, whoa, where are you going, buddy? And when he transitions back, look, Pushkonski comes through, he's completely blinded by the smoke because Correa's gone so deep. When he comes out, he's on the inside of the track, not where he needs to be, and got to play a big load of catch-up to get on there. And again, Correa's transition for me towards the second wall, Nine out of ten times, that's a crash. He's way too fast, and all of a sudden, he gets the job done. Watch the speed he picks up here across the center section. Loses the rear bumper. Don't need that. And he's full throttle into that next wall. Incredible from Korea.
Yeah, Correa put on a masterclass. That was a masterclass of a lead. And I'm going to say, I think the scrappy chase from Pushkonsky, I don't think that's going to be enough this weekend, this event, this occasion to take the win. And I think you can see they're having to get out of the car. Yeah. I love the face when they look up at the crowd and go, this is insane. Because when they're driving, they just look at the walls. Yep. Because obviously, you don't want to take your eyes off those. But uh, just the, the occasion here, this is everyone wants to be in that main event, top 16. We told you it's all a secret. You're going to see things you've never seen before, but who's going to be there? Will it be Pushkonsky? Will it be Correa? It's Diogo Correa from Portugal getting the win and going through. And you know what? That's a, I think to me that was an obvious decision. Pushkonsky getting lost in the smoke, wavering, cutting the track. He just and hit, even the, the hit on the initiation was a mistake. So a scrappy chase from Pushkonsky knocks him out of competition. Correa brave. Big dives onto the wall, stayed in it, could have flopped, could have, you know, spun himself out when Pushkonsky hit him and said, hey, you know, but you know, yeah, these guys yeah. ain't footballers. No. Nope. <laughs> they're race drivers. So they're out here saying, nah, let's keep it going. So Correa goes through the Portuguese driver. Looks on form to me and wouldn't like to be seeing him in the top 16 if I was out there. I'm getting flashbacks from Finland when this young man came out and just replicated this constantly, run after run. And, and you know, next thing he's third step on the podium. Again, again it could be one of those nights. We keep yeah. seeing it. Well, here, I got I to gotta talk about this one. Yep. This is the big championship moment. Connor Shannon will take on Mika Keski Korpi. Keski Korpi qualifying a little bit down the order, but well capable here. Shannon again, engine problems, no practice again today. The only runs Connor Shannon has done of the track are his two qualifying runs. That's all he's done of this track. He has only had two runs since the start of competition, and he is the championship leader. This is pressure of the highest level, Ian, and Mika Keski Korpi will know that that is a wounded Shanahan beside him. It doesn't matter if he's leading the championship, he can take him out here. And Mika Keski Korpi we will know how good Shannon is, how good his lead run is, and Connor Shannon's got to be feeling the pressure. He certainly has got to be feeling the pressure, but a, a, win a winner, a champion, a masterclass driver will shake that pressure off Dave and say, that's just for the tyres. I am the one that wants to be on top step of both the podiums. They're through the gears. The start line goes green, and here we go. It's going to be Shanahan to lead out Keski Korpi, and Keski Korpi wants this one. He's hungry, he needs some results, and he's up onto the door at GT86, but Shanahan looks flawless at the moment. Oh, Keski Korpi gets lost. In the smoke, on the transition now, loses a whole load of ground as Shanahan absolutely pins it to the wall and looks for the fast transition across the circuit. Keski Corby is going to go for a risky dive and outside zone five. Can he make it pay off? He can, but there's still shallow proximity. And once again, another little dive, but he can't get there. Well, it was just one mistake. We talked about it in qualifying. One mistake could be enough. And Mika Keski Korpi makes it. It's on the inner zone. He just got lost in the smoker. Didn't know where he was on the track. Got it really out of shape. But Connor Shannon, this is his third lap of the track this weekend. And it looks like he's been here all week. Unbelievable. I mean, it's textbook. And, and, and I think this is what a champion can do. He can come out here with limited practice and still lay down a 96 and 97 point qualifying run. And for me, Keski Korpi, I think the occasion and the, and the smoke, watch this, he gets way caught up. The smoke gets in his face. He goes for the transition and he transitions way offline. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened there. I think he's running no windows on the car of yeah, Keski Korpi, and Shanahan's smoke went into the cabin of Keski Korpi's car, and he couldn't even see the steering wheel. You'll notice Shannon with the windows up. Yep. This has happened before in competition. Watch that no windows on Mika's car, oh. and I think all of that has gone inside, and he's lost where he was on the track. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think the smoke blinded him completely. He couldn't see where he was going, and before he knew it, he was in the wrong place on the circuit. And once you've lost that proximity, once you've lost that line, it's game over. But Mika came back into it. He, he did everything he could do to put up a fight here. But now Shanahan may be sitting with a small advantage as Keski Korpi goes into the lead. He's a very capable driver, Mika Keski Korpi. He's one of Finland's best, and Shannon knows not to underestimate anyone here tonight. As they come off the line, second half of the battle, Shannon's got to get the job done here. Yeah, he's got the hometown heroes and the fans behind him right now. They're screaming and shouting his name. Can he get the job done? Big initiation from Keski Korpi. He knows he needs to try and get away. He's out of outside zone one a little early. Connor Shanahan playing it safe, but look at the transition from Shanahan. No messing around. He mirrors him. He absolutely mimics every move that Keski Korpi has to offer. He's glued to the side. And that BMW Touring, they come through the center of the circuit. Shanahan not going to get lost. He makes a little dive, but now he's shallow. But Keski Korpi struggles in outside zone five. And that's a big mistake that opens the door. And Shanahan takes the step in. Yeah, to me, looks like the job done for Connor Shanahan. I'll tell you why. Two big errors from Mika Keski Korpi on both runs. He had obviously that 
offline moment on his in his chase run. It looked to me like something stalled up on the car as he came to outer zone five, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and you know, I was watching it on the monitors and in person. Looked like he just struggled to get that car going. Not sure if there's a mechanical issue there, but um, wow, just watching these guys make it look this easy is almost I mean, this is superhuman stuff right now. So as you can see, Connor Shanahan fires through. This is the bit that really impressed me. Keep Gessie Gorby. Great transition on the inner zone from Gessie Gorby. Look at this. Oh, so close. One of the coolest shots I've ever seen in drifting. And as he comes in, you can see Connor starts to turn the screw as the lap goes on, knowing he needs that little bit of proximity. Gessie Gorby bouncing off the walls a little bit in front of him. <laughs> it's just such a unique track. It's, it's a really hard thing to chase. But it looks to me like there may have been uh, one mistake too many from Mika there. Um, as Connor Shannon, as we mentioned before, Nothing sewn up just yet. He's got to do a lot of work here tonight to get that championship. It's going to not be decided anytime soon, but this is as good a way as any to start his campaign if the judges uh, agree with what we're saying. But Mika Kesky Korpi, look at the finish for that. They're proud of him. He's, done, he's had a great season. He's done a good job, in my opinion. And uh, look at the back of Kesky Korpi's car. It's absolutely in ribbons, it's bent every which way. And let's see which way it goes. It is Connor Shanahan getting the win. He can't believe it. It's been a really tough weekend for our current uh, points leader. Only four laps of competition, and he's won. You know, he's got a good one every time. Exactly that. And breaking news in my ear, Dave, with Connor Shanahan advancing into the top 16, that means now that Dwayne McKeever cannot win the 2023 Driftmasters European Championship. He can continue for, obviously, there's still some podium available this weekend for him, but that now seals the deal and knocks McKeever out of the running. So now. Now, the amount of drivers that can take the championship this weekend starts to shorten. Yep, just five remain who can win it. McKeever knocked out, just mathematically can't catch yeah. uh, Shanahan at this point, uh, regardless of the result tonight. But McKeever said it himself in the interview with Becky, he said, this round will be remembered forever, maybe more than some championships. So maybe just winning the event is like winning a championship. So it's a bonus round for everyone that you know isn't the championship leader they get to be immortalized here at the largest drift event of all time. So, lots still to play for. And look at this, Timo Peltola punching the window, saying, do you remember that battle I had with Clint Van Out? Well, wait to see this. We're going to go 10 times harder. And I can guarantee you, they have high-fived 50 times before they've got out onto this track. <laughs> and they're like, all oh, these people came for a show? Let's give them a show. Oh, they're going to give them a show, that's for sure, as we wait for Conor Shanahan and Mika Kessigorpi to make their way off the circuit. Those two guys on the line now, ready to do battle. A spot in the top 16 awaits. And we're almost through one half of our top 32 bracket so far, as we see our marshals just checking over Timo Peltola's car. It looks like they have got the thumbs up all around. So there we go, thumbs up from both the drivers. You can see the white smoke start to appear from the bonnet of Timo Peltola's Mercedes-Benz wagon. As the light goes green, the clutches get dropped and they are off the start line. It's going to be Clint Van Orta leading Peltola and Peltola always taking a bite out the side. He goes for it, he knows he needs the aggression, but look at this from Clint Van Orta. Textbook already on the wall, on those zones, flirts with the wall, that front zone, oh! And Peltola gets it wrong, cuts himself up there, takes too much out of it, but he's back into the fight already. How is, how is he still in this? How did he even make that move happen? As now Clint Van Orta dives across the circuit, he looks for outside zone five, but he's way offline. Oh, and contact! Oh. Well, judges are going to take out the notepads here and go. There was quite some contact twice, and Clint Van Orta's car has nothing left of the back end. And Timo and, and, and Clint just pushing too hard. That's what happened. We talked about this pushing beyond their limits. It looked to me like there was contact on both occasions from uh, Timu and from Clint Van Out. Clint Van Out's car at the back, not much left on it. Talk us through it, Ian. Your thoughts, two big moments here, one at the inner zone and then one as we transition to outer zone five. Yeah, I think that this all went wrong, really, for Timo Potola right here. Watch this, fires the car on a massive angle. I think it's going to hit him here. He has catches to back up. Off. Yeah, he catches up with uh, the Clint Van Orten and says, oh, I'm on loads of angle. I need to tri make this transition happen really well, quick. You know what? I'm just looking at Clint Van Out's line there. Does Clint Van Oot slow up? That's the question. He's way offline when he starts that corner. I'm just putting it out there, playing devil's advocate here. Yeah, no. Buddy. Does Clint Van Oot slow up a little bit there? And then, of course, at the end, we've got to look at another contact and see what the story there is. For me, I think Peltola really tried to put too much into it. I, I want to see this outside zone five. Now, Clint Van Oot's offline at this point, but he's on throttle. And I think, for me, Peltola comes in a little hot. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, I could take into consideration yeah, what just, you said about, yeah, you know, Clint you know, Van Aert. Look, we watch drifting, and, and you guys watch it like we do, and, and there's always the obvious answer. Of course. But the obvious answer isn't always the easiest answer because there's so many variables. So you might say, hey, he hit him. 
But then you got to look at the lead car and say, was he in the right place? Was he where the judges told him to be? Is he causing that incident? So, you know, it's a bit like uh, an insurance claim, Ian. Someone runs into the back <laughs> of you, you know, did you slow up too much or did that person yep. go too fast? That's very much their assessors is what they are, these judges, and they have to figure out who was at fault. What we do know is we're going to have a second half of the battle. Whatever they've decided, they've decided now. But this is going to be all to play for because neither Timu or Clint are going to know what way the judges have gone on that first run. No, they're certainly not. And they're going to sit on the line and ready to do battle again. And, you know, throw down as hard as they need to to win the battle. Yeah, wouldn't it, would it complete on the first run? Someone's at fault here. Someone so is, yeah. It's going to be an interesting one. Well, they've off the line, ready to go, and Clint Van Orr will want a little bit of redemption on this one. He's hunting him down. Oh, tags the front bumper on the back end of that Mercedes-Benz already. Clint Van Orr's angry. He's hungry for this one. He now chucks that S14 up onto the side of the Mercedes-Benz. They come through. Clint Van Orr closer to the wall. He makes a big transition into that outside zone, but he starts to get driven away from as Patola puts foot to floor, starts to use all of that diesel power power talk to drive away through the smoke comes Clint Van Orp. he's way offline as they fire into outside zone five he gets himself touching up in the pocket but there's no proximity Pultola out of six and across the line yeah a little bit messier that those two runs than what we saw in the, in the first I think maybe a little bit grip added to both cars yeah. and it, it actually made them quite difficult to drive in I think that, you know they're obviously pushing the boundaries here I think they found the limits there both <laughs> guys not looking as comfortable over the two runs and it's going to come down to the judges decision in my opinion over the contact on the first runs did, did that you know where did we see the line there was it you know look at this hits the goes under the back <laughs> What is happening? He went under the back of Team of Toscar on the initiation. You know, just had a little impact there on the run-in, and everyone was fine. And yeah, I mean, we're going to have a night of it here. We are. We're, gonna, we're really going to have a night of it, Dave. And look at this. Clint Van Ort closer to the wall than Peltola. That, for me, just shows that he's willing to whisk, risk anything this weekend. And, and, I mean, remember, everything's going to change when, we, when the light goes away, when we have dusk here, and then it becomes all a night event. Different lights, different grip levels, different temperatures. It's all going to play its part. Both drivers are like, we just wrecked some cars there, didn't we? <laughs> we are two guys that went out there and did some wrecking. That's what was happening in that battle. But the judges are going to decide who's got the decision, who is going to go through to the top 16. Will it be Clint Van Out? Will it be Timo Peltola? Will it be Holland or will it be Finland? It will be Holland. And Clint Van Out got the win, goes through to our top 16. Quick throwback to you, Kevin. There was a lot of smashing and bashing going on there, but it looked to me like uh, Timo maybe pushed it too hard. Yeah, another very eventful battle by these two guys, but realistically it all comes down to that first run and the contact coming into outer zone five. And as you can see here, Clint relatively online, but Timo just coming in way too hot, offline, makes contact rear wheel to rear wheel. And at those speeds coming towards that wall, even a slight contact like that will really mess up the lead car's balance and put them into a spin like you saw there. So for us, absolutely Timo at fault there and Clint going through overall. But you know what? Classic Timu pushing too hard, love yeah. him for it. Yeah, yeah. Never changed, Timu. Oh, no. That, what that, a showman. That's his style, Dave. He that's is just the man. <laughs> and here we go. Two guys that also got a bit of style about them is Dwayne McKeever from Ireland and Davis Sposop from Poland. And Davis Sposop, wild car driver this weekend, but he's been looking strong. Polish driver, really talented. And Dwayne McKeever is going to have a look across and not want to underestimate this. McKeever now, he can only aim to win the event as the big finish to the year, and that'll mean a lot to him. McKeever, this is a track very close to him in Northern Ireland that's very similar dimensions to this. He'll be at home here, but Davis Sposop, with the Polish fans screaming in the window at him, is going to have, I think, an extra 50 horsepower just on fan power. <laughs> so here we go. Davis Sposop will be in the chase position. Dwayne McKeever will be in the lead position. We are getting through the top 32 here at the final round of the 2023 Driftmasters. European Championship. Five drivers still in the championship hunt as we are in the top 32 heading for the main event later today. Let's see who's going to make it there. Will it be McKeever? Will it be Spossop? Well, they're going through the gears. Down they come. Spossop not one to be counted out of a fight, but McKeever we know is world class as he fires into outside zone one. Spossop finds the front wheel, looks for that inside zone, now waits for the transition and gets it done nicely, but he lost a little ground as McKeever stands on the accelerator. Spossop fires the car. Oh, wheels bang as they make contact. I think McKeever's car shuts down. I think McKeever's car has got a problem. You can see it, look, it's a drive shaft or a gearbox. The, the, the vibration on the steering wheel, for me, that's a failure in the car. That's a differential, that's, a, that's something gearbox. You can see the car, no smoke from the rear wheels. I'm going to think that Dwayne McKeever's out of this battle, and we've been robbed of, uh, of an exceptional battle again. And you can hear the clunking in the car, so that is definitely a mechanical failure for Dwayne McKeever. And he's had a bad year for that. Bad luck all round for Dwayne McKeever, and he's going to be—he's going to be very upset about that. Yeah, I, mean, I have no words, Dave. I, I, I 
can't believe it. Look at this as he gets into the outside zone. Let's see where it all went wrong, really. He was on absolutely flying from. Spossop, though, was on a hunt. He wanted this one. He was hungry for it. Fired into this outside zone, gets onto the throttle, and then you start to see the smoke wither away just there. Yeah, I'm, I think you're right, Dave. I think this could be differential gearbox. We can see now a cheeky look out the window of the commentary box, Dave. We can see that McKeever's being pushed off the circuit. Yeah, McKeever can't even make it out of the, the arena, so therefore, yeah, mechanical failure. You can see the car just completely shut down. Just around here, Spasov's on the brakes. He's handbraking. He's trying to, you know, make something happen, but McKeever's slowing dramatically. And, and the reason for me straight away was that McKeever could have reinitiated, could have you know, stop the throttle, there was nothing there. And the body language alone will tell you the story. Well, I've just heard it in my ear, Dave. Gearbox gone on McKeever's car, and a gearbox failure takes him out of the championship round. He couldn't win the championship. We know that as Conor Shanahan advanced through to top 16, but he still had the chance of a podium. And unfortunately, that is out for the weekend. Wow. Yeah, David Spasov will take it but he won't want it because David Spasov was looking so forward to this battle with Dwayne McKeever. He's been watching on, you know, he's a wild card this weekend. He's only at this event. Yeah. He's been watching all the other five going, I just want to get in the ring. I just want to get in the mix. And he does, he doesn't get it even true half a lap. So Spasov will do one run here, just past the circuit. Once he initiates, he will get the win and go through to the top 16. So there you have it. Dwayne McKeever limps out of competition and out of the championship hunt and he will remain with no more points from this competition. So then there were five. And David Spasov, you know what? It's one of those nights, Ian. It's one <laughs> of those one nights. Of the, it is one of those nights. Where David Spasov could be the guy. He could be the guy. Well, all he needs to do, we know the technicalities now. We've had it a few times this evening. This isn't the first off. He did need to initiate and drift that first corner. I think Spasov's just going to go for a full run now of this circuit. Hopefully he doesn't uh, run into any issues himself. It's boss up looking all form. We said it in qualifying yesterday. He's not one to be, you know, snarled at. We watched him before in competition. He was on absolute flying form before. And Spossop will be hungry for a win here in Poland in front of his home crowd. As David Spossop looks for that final line across the circuit. And that will be the job done for Spossop into the top 16. The job done well, too, because it's yeah. a good run. I mean, of course, he could save the car and just do a corner. But... That extra practice lap, it means everything, especially when he will now go head to head with Connor Shanahan, the current championship leader in the top 16. Not an easy battle for Spasob, not an easy battle for Connor Shannon either. No, certainly not. That top 16 battle is going to mean a huge amount when it comes to the championship later on. So we're back on track with some new contenders rolling in and two guys that I think have won the hearts of every Drift fan around the world this year. Oran Nielsen, a guy who is, I was got the official call here from David Spasov, as you guys can see, he is gonna go through Dwayne McKeever out of competition. Look at the scenes here in the stadium. Absolutely ridiculous. It's very hard not to be distracted if you're here by just the sheer volume of people here. Oran Nielsen from Norway, and he is in the mix, and that car has been on its roof twice this year. He's had a chassis leg replaced, he's had an engine go, and he's still here fighting. That's a man that doesn't give up. And then I'll tell you one thing, Kevin Piscotti, you got to love him too. Here's a guy that came to Drift Masters in 2017, watched an event, had never even sat in a drift car, and just turned around to everyone around him and said, I'm going to win that one day. And everyone laughed. Everyone had a good chuckle at Kevin Piscotti. And look at him here, almost qualifying first last night. And Piscotti going into this one for me as the favorite, the Hungarian driver, his positive attitude has got him this far. And Kevin Piscotti and Oren Nielsen, you're going to hear these names for years to come in this championship. We are about to see something special here. Oh, you certainly are. Look, Kevin Piscotti for me, he was so close last night to taking, you know, first place in qualifying. It was, it was, it was breathtaking, that qualifying run. Can he replicate that run over and over again? Can that be the seal of the deal? He's been hungry for a podium, Dave. He's been fighting for it all season. He's been progressing as a driver. Oh, hungry for a podium. I get what you're saying, because he's from Hungary. Good. Like that was like very it. clever, Ian. <laughs> I mean, I had to get a couple in there. It's the final round. It's the, final round. It's the final round. We're holding nothing back. It's the Catalina <laughs> wine mixer of drifting. We're here. It's the big one. Oran Nielsen and Kevin Piscotti want to be in the top 16. And at this point in time, I just want to sit back and watch what happens. Because I can already tell you, because of the way Oran Nielsen's car has been uh, situated on the start line, he has got a little bit of a plan here. And he knows Piscotti's good and he knows Piscotti's fast. And Piscotti knows if I could just replicate my qualifying run, Oran Nielsen's got a lot to contend with. Here we go. Here we go. Through the gears they come. Look at this. Oran Nielsen goes for a little early initiation, but I don't think he understands the grip and the pace that Kevin Piscotti's got as he now starts to apply the pressure. 
the skull, he flies away. Oh, and Oren Nilsson tries to follow the same line, but has to make avoiding contact with the wall as Piscotti disposes of some of the rear end panels. He puts a tail light to the wall, but now Oren Nilsson looks for the back bumper. Cheeky dive down onto outside zone five, and he makes it pay off as Piscotti jumps on the foot brake, positions the car on the wall. Oren Nilsson plants it on the door. Oh, that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Oren Nielsen, Kevin Piscotti. If they stood there, they would get an ovation for about 20 <laughs> minutes after that one. Piscotti's lead run is just the confidence that kid has. It's textbook. It's unbelievable. And Oren Nielsen, the dives. We haven't seen dives like that today. But you know, one thing I want to focus on is, is a point on the circuit coming up right now. Watch this. Piscotti's going so close to the wall that as the chase car, you have to take avoiding contact, uh, avoiding uh, maneuvers because he. Oren Nielsen transitioned and was like, whoa, I can't go there because I'm going to really wipe the wall out. And look at that, it runs the wheel oh. of the front bumper along the wall. That's a big car to be that precise with. <laughs> it is. You know what, this is going to be... I'm just going to say it right now, I think Piscotti is going to go for this just the same. I think Oren Nielsen, great lead driver, very smooth. You can see Oren Nielsen just trying to get as close as he can to Piscotti. gave him the perfect lead run. No excuses for our Nielsen, but this dive through the smoke. Watch this. Nielsen goes, and here we go. Fires through, and he gets up onto the door. That's going to be pretty cool. That is very, very cool. Now they need to repay the favour. They're going to switch sides. Oren Nielsen to lead out Kevin Piscotti for a spot in the top 16. Fingers are crossed on in the grandstands as people are wishing on their favourite drivers side by side. Piscotti not missing around. Goes for the front wheel on initiation, and it pays off. And look at this. It's the first time I've seen anyone do that kind of initiation. Piscotti. You you can see him fluctuating the throttle. He's got way more grip than what Aaron Nielsen has. He hasn't managed to use full throttle at the moment as Aaron Nielsen gets into long outside zone four. Back bumper onto the wall, bonnet flexing, panels flying around the circuit as Oren Nielsen goes for outside zone five. And now Piscotti starts to close the door. Oh, and he contacts him and spins Nielsen. I was just about to jump in and go, nobody's going to stop Kevin Piscotti tonight. Kevin Piscotti stopped Kevin Piscotti. The minute it was, I was just at the tip of my tongue to say, that's Kevin Piscotti's and no one's going to stop him. And all of a sudden, he makes the most minute of errors. And to me, it looked like he lunged. He sort of gripped up and lunged, as you said, had a little more grip in the car. And to me, and you can just look the at Hungarian the fans, fans, the Hungarian fans are like, what happened there? Or Nielsen gets out of the car. So did Piscotti. I think Piscotti goes too fast. I think he goes up on the inside and he goes wheel to wheel. But hold on a minute, because well, I can I mean, hear I, the judges in the background. I don't know. I, I don't know whether Oran slowed. Now, that will be a deciding factor, but I, I, I think from Kevin Piscotti's body language, I think he knows he went too hard. Let me, I mean, we, we could watch the replay and have the opposite opinion here, right? So we come into this corner. Let's see what happened. Nielsen goes out to the edge of the track. It looks to me like he's on full tilt there. Look how, look how far up Piscotti is. He's up front wheel to front wheel. And he just lunges forward. Yeah. It looks to me like he just makes massive contact. And of course, wheel to front wheel to front wheel means that Piscotti loses, or sorry, Nielsen loses steering. Yeah, instantly. I mean, you, the, the wheel's locked. Let's see what happens here. Watch the onboard. Yeah, we can see it from inside the car. Piscotti, oh, he knows he's going, oh, yeah. Oh, he even starts to understeer. Is I think he much? has understeer. Yeah, I, I think mean... Piscotti has understeer and understeers into Nielsen because he's so much grip. In the back of the car, Nielsen's not moving at the right pace, and all of a sudden, those rear wheels start to push those front wheels. Oh, the brake light is bit... locked on. Yeah, we're not sure what is going on here on the track. So is all Nielsen saying... Right. Yeah, so we're just we're getting some notions here. Well, no notions. We're getting some uh, deliberation, and it looks like Oren Nielsen gets the win and goes through to the next stage of competition, knocking out Kevin Piscotti. And Oren Nielsen goes through. He cannot believe it. What an end to the season for him, Ian. He goes through to the biggest show of all time after rolling the car twice halfway through the season, having an engine failure, and now he's in. He look at this. You're not going to damage the roof anymore, Oren, because you've already wrecked it in Sweden. I want to talk about this though. First place, second place qualifiers out of competition. Wow, and I've got to jump back quickly to Kevin O'Connell. Kevin, just before we jump in, uh, just was it that contact? It was Piscotti's fault? Yeah, absolutely, it was definitely Piscotti's fault. You could see that as he was coming to the end, uh, he started to straighten up, slowing down a little bit too much, and therefore he was the cause of the contact. Thanks, Kev, just making some clarity now. Big championship hunt on here for Peter Vjainsek. He's going to have to hail Mary this one tonight, come all the way from the back. 
But that is what Peter Vansek does. He's the two-time reigning champion. He's in the stadium that he made his name in. And these stadiums in Poland is where he won so many championships. But he's up against Kevin Pizor from Estonia, who looked unstoppable in Germany. He took a podium just behind Vansek and Shanahan. This is a huge battle. Once the tree came out, this is the one I noticed. Big on-form drivers going head-to-head. -head. Vansek, if he loses this, he's out of the championship. That's what's on the line. Well, it is on the line. It's all on the line. And they're off the line. They're through the gears. Down they come. Kevin Passeur jumps onto the back bumper, he initiates before and takes the back bumper off. And Vincex S15, Passeur wants this, he's hungry. They transition, Passeur is with him every inch of the circuit now. As he makes a big dive onto the door, goes Kevin Passeur. As Vincex sticks it to the wall, he can't hold on as he loses it through the centre of the circuit. But now Passeur is going to go for a big dive on outside zone five. And Peter Vincex makes things look easy, but Passeur is on the door. This is just another level. We are watching something special here tonight, another level of driving. That looked to me like a final of any other event I've watched. They did not back down one inch. Peter Vansek got the bumper taken off on initiation by Kevin Pizzor. Pizzor's like, let's go, Peter, let's get moving. Watch this. Watch this. Kevin Pizzor does not hold back an inch. Watch the transition. He goes, now, boom. And he says, right, you're going now. Bam. He mirrors every oh, single sec, move. Nine sec's maneuver there. So fluid, so smooth. I mean, he's got such a good transition of sec that it's easy to chase. He's not wobbling one bit around the circuit. sec tags the wall here. Pizzor's right with him. And as they come through the smoke, look at this. Pizzor loses him in the smoke, transitions in the wrong place and then makes a big dive across. So we missed that a little bit on the first look because he was in the smoke, but that was a mistake from Pazur. It was a brave dive though, Dave. You've got well, to it, take your hats oh, off to Pazur. It was a brave dive. It's brave dive. to even put your harness on here and, and put your <laughs> helmet on, to be honest. But from my perspective, it looked like maybe Pazur just got a little bit caught in the smoke. That happens. It happens on this circuit. And again, watch it. No windows on Pazur's car. The smoke goes right in the cabin. Just saying, here we go. Second half of the battle. Oh, what's happened? Pazur oh. shut down. Ball start? No. I'm not sure what happened there. Like Pazur may have missed the gear. Something went strange. That's going to be a massive deduction for Pazorian. Yeah, huge deduction for Pazor. They're going to get back into it, though, and Pazor's going to try and do everything he can. Oh, he's tagged the wall, and he's tagged Vincek, and now Vincek's taken on some damage. The back end of Pazor's car falling apart, and that car yeah. is wounded, yeah, Dave. something went wrong on the initiation. There's definitely a mechanical issue with that car. Peter Vincek's like, what is going on? He's stopped, he's going, he's stopped, he's going. And Vincek, look at the eyes. He looks across. Vincek will know what this means. Yeah, instantaneously, he is a pro and has been two-time champ. He's going to know straight away. Once Pazur shut down on that run-up, once he hit that wall, and the back of Pazur's car is absolutely wrecked right now, he's going to know what this means. And this looks to me by Peter Gainsek, as he waves to his home fans here in Poland. He's the, he's the big fan favorite here for good reason. I think Kevin Pizzor has had a bad end to the season there, Ian, with some, I think, mechanical issues with the car. I think he's going to be devastated over that. I think we're going to see that a few times over this evening. I think there's going to be a few upsets, a few battles where people, you know, who we expected to just, do well just, go Just for out. a moment, Ian, the level of sportsmanship here. Peter Vjansek, look, he's off the rim. He has no tire oh, on the back of the rim, that's why. Hits the wall, D beats the tire, and that's why the car shuts down. There is a car that looks like it's done six rounds of Drift Masters right there. <laughs> That, that is the look. That's, That's the, look. the look. That's the six rounds of Driftmasters look, is what you're seeing there. They look good from yeah. a good yeah. 20 foot away. The is like, maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll go, we'll see how things work out. And, and what I was saying about sportsmanship, Vyansek apologizing to Kevin Pessor, saying, I can't believe, I'm so sorry that happened to you. What sort of people are they? They're just incredible. Let's see what happens. It's going to be Peter Vyansek from Poland getting the win and going through to the top 16. He's still in with an outside chance for the championship. The first ever back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back is still alive. But it is going to be need some interesting things to happen from here to there. Vyansek doing a great job. And we've watched absolute carnage so far in this top 32, Ian. Uh, this top 32 is enough for me. And this is only the warm-up. <laughs> we could just finish This now. is only the warm-up for the main event. And I'm already having an absolutely amazing time up here. The view is incredible. Every seat in the place is almost full. People are like, surely not. Surely, and even I said, surely not. I, I, when you told me. You surely rang, we you can. Rang me and you surely, said, surely there can't be 55,000 people in one place watching drifting. Have a look at your screens, folks. Have a look around. And right now, 
Another incredible battle lines up. Benedict Ascherma, the Lithuanian champion, against Naoki Nakamura, the Japanese champion. Nakamura, we've been waiting for him to shine all year. These tracks, these tight technical ones in the chase position, this is where he's a master of his craft. But Cherba hasn't had the best season. Nakamura hasn't had the best season. Hey, might just win the biggest event of all time. That'll turn things around. That's what both of these drivers are thinking right now. They certainly are. But for me, Cherba's a killer. Cherba's absolutely stone cold. There's no messing around when it comes to top 32 battles or any twin battle for Benedict. Cherba. We've seen no Noki Nakamura on the podium already this year, but Cherba has yet to get there. He's been fighting his way all the way Remember, through. Remember, Nakamura is sitting in a position where if he gets some points tonight, could go top five in the championship in his first year. That'll be in his mind as they head into that first corner. Very strange initiation from Nakamura and Cherba, but they stay in it. Look at this. Look at this. On the door from Nakamura as Cherba with that beautifully smooth lead run so far. Cherba goes to the wall. Nakamura kind of a late transition there as he comes up onto the door. And Nakamura right up onto the door. Cherba is way out of the line there. And now Nakamura is being allowed back into the fight as he transitions through. Oh, Nakamura gets it wrong. Gets the transition wrong. And now Cherba goes with a bit of an advantage. Smashes the bullet off the wall. Now Nakamura is back at this. I'm exhausted. The cars are exhausted. And there were so many things happening at one time in that battle. That we've got to go back and check them out. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what quite went wrong, really there for both of those guys. It was a weird initiation and then there was a few points on the circuit that were very, very strange. So we're going to take a look back at the replay. It was a very slow initiation. It looked like they both struggled to get off the mark. Nakamura, Nakamura's look at car this. lifting the front wheel off the off ground, the Nakamura's time, car. Yep. But for me, there was, a, there was a point where Cherba came out of an outside zone very uncharacteristically because he was on a, on a perfect lead lineup until that point. I'm not sure what happened, if there was contact, and right there, that's it, he's out of that zone. I don't. I think Cherba just got a little lost there. I don't think he realised where he was. Yeah, but watch Nakamura now in the chase. He's kind of in the wrong place there. He transitions too early. Oh, this one's still in the balance. Big mistakes from both guys for me. I think this one's going to come down to the second run, Ian. And it's going to be Nakamura to lead from Japan, taking on Lithuania's Benedict as Cherba. And Cherba left about an hour and a half before uh, Nakamura then. That's going to hurt Cherba here on the run-up. Yeah, certainly is. And he knows Nakamura's fast. He knows he needs to try and stick with him. He knows he needs that proximity. You can see Cherba out on the outside zone. He's cutting the circuit. He's looking to make the move. Now he does a little dive. Oh, and he rams him up the back on the transition. They both get back oh, into it. Oh, don't keep going. Just stop. Nope, they're staying going. Nakamura's wheel isn't even facing in the right direction, and he's still doing the track. Bits of both cars falling off the track. They are absolutely smashing each other to pieces here as Cherba angrily pushes Nakamura across the line, and Nakamura got an absolute thump through the inner zone there. I am not even sure what is going on on this. They ain't holding back tonight. There are no mess in Look at the back wheel of Nakamura's car. He did half a lap like that. It's not even facing in the right direction. Cherba absolutely slams into the back what of Nakamura. So why, why does Cherba get that close? That's what I want to try and break he's down. He's on here. the inside line. He's picking up pace he's picking here. Picking up speed, yeah. But for me, look, what happens to? Oh. I don't know if that car was going to transition properly. I, I, the thing is, I think I think he's going to do Watch it. Watch Nakamura's car. No, he's trying. He's he not even allowed transition. So I think I think Cherba goes a little too aggressive there. I think Cherba catches a little grip on the inside zone and shoots straight. If he'd hit him on angle, I Fair would say enough. I would agree with Ian, but he hit him square. Yeah. So he's dead straight through there. That's initial, you know, reaction from us. And then Nakamura's rear wheel is bent the wrong way. And Nakamura goes, yeah, I'll just finish the run. Why wouldn't I? Like, how sketchy were those cars to drive? Oh. Oh. No, not happy. Nakamura not happy with Benedict Cherba one bit. And you can see Nakamura not happy with the rear end of his car being absolutely destroyed by Benedictus Cherba in that run. It goes to show the tension building on the track, Ian, means a lot to all of these guys, and we're starting to see it creep through the smiles here. Yeah, we're getting personalities coming out now. These yep. drivers, they want it, they're hungry for it. And look at that, you can see Nakamura is angry, Dave. He's angry that Nakamura has been hit so heavily from behind by Cherba. And Cherba, you can see, went up to apologize, said, yeah. I'm sorry, it was a mistake. And Nakamura just not looking too happy about it. And this is where the tension starts to grow. We're getting a little bit of drama. Judges Dave, still I mean, having a look at this. this. There's yeah, more the judges still this. having a look at this one. I'm trying to see what they're now Watch at. this at the end. Look at Cherba. He gets a little angry here, up onto the door, but, hits, but hits. Nakamura is way off that yeah, line. Off. I don't but then know. He's, no, but he's offline because his wheel is bent. Yeah, but from I being don't hit. know if, if, uh, if, if Nakamura come across the line and stop. I mean, I know there's break. a lot of tension on the track, but oh, this yeah. is kind of what you want to see, right? You want to oh, see yeah. guys go tooth and nail. This is what it means to these guys. Who's going to get the call? 
And it's going to be Naoki Nakamura gets the call and goes through to the top 16. You can see that he is uh, thumbs up to the crowd, but that was a bit of a rattle for him through that run. Quickly back to you, Kevin. Cherba deemed at fault for that contact. Yeah, very messy battle there with mistakes from both drivers, really. But what it all comes down to is that contact on the second run there. What we had to analyze and see was, was Naoki excessively slowing before his transition? But no, in our opinion, yes, the car was floating a little bit, but I, we could see that he was still maintaining proper pace and was not decelerating before his transition point. And we think uh, Cherba was getting a little bit eager and just trying to maintain that proximity and dive in just after the transition. But realistically, Cherba was massively at fault there and he was just a little bit over eager. As you can see here, Naoki not decelerating majorly before that transition just settling the car, which he's entitled to do coming into that diesel zone, and Cherba just surging forward and causing that contact. Yeah, I'm going to be honest here and tell you that Nakamura did well not to go front into the wall. We got a big leak from uh, Nakamura's car here at the back. Rear-mounted radiator in this car, yep. Ian, I'd imagine it's water, not fuel at the back. Yeah, that and is the it. The fuel cell much more protected than the radiator would be, so they're having a little bit of a, a water leak. I imagine they're going to try and lift this car out without dragging that water all around the place, but uh, yeah, we got a big leak on the back of that car. And this is probably why Nakamura was so disgruntled, a big damage done to the car and he's not got a whole lot of time to fix it. Well, no, and especially not because most of these guys run a radiator in the rear of the car, but the radiator is a custom made. So these aren't something that you would have one, two, three of as a spare part because it isn't something that you you know you automatically get damaged much. They're quite protected by around a lot of cr uh, crash structure. So for Nakamura, look, he tastes it <laughs> as if to say, yep, that's antifreeze. I know exactly what that is. But for him, I think he's a little disgruntled because if... Oh, he's got another vehicle to leave the track on. There you go. He's, <laughs> he's, he's switched it up. He's going. He's going in on the scooter now. He's like a Formula he, One driver. He's he, like, he, has taken, he has taken our track manager's scooter. He's fallen off it already. He's doing he's a burnout <laughs> in the scooter on the track. Oh, the emotional roller coaster that is Naoki Nakamura. One minute he's arguing with Benedict Estrella, but the next minute he's doing burnouts on a scooter. This is what Driftmasters is all about. I mean, and I don't know what that is. I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> we told you we were going to have a highlight reel for the final round, and I think we've uh, we've already achieved that, Dave, so far. Yeah, the track manager says, thanks for that. I'll have so that back now. Got a yep. big flat spot on the tyre now. <laughs> thanks for that. No, okay. So Naoki's car, Naoki's car will go back to the pits. It will be, I'm sure, repaired. But well, it's, it's, who knows? I'm going to say, I'm going to say, big maybe. Damage. Yeah, big it's, damage. It's big damage, Dave. And, and you know, we, 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 I'm assuming that that's the radiator that's been damaged. Can it be repaired? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can interview him because he has absolutely no English. No, but uh, his, he's very his, animated. His facial expressions yeah. tell the story. And uh, yeah, he's got a, a big damage on the back of the car. And I think that might have been the initial reaction with Cherba was that, you know, I don't know if I'm even going to make it back out after this. That yeah. was a very heavy hit. And I think Cherba made an honest mistake. Obviously, you've got to give props to Cherba. He's a guy who respects how good Nakamura is. He knows that you can't back off. He took a chance. It didn't work out. That's the fine margins we're dealing with. It certainly is. Well, we are going to get that car picked up and removed the circuit so we don't drop fluid all over the track. And... Uh, We've got another Mexican wave going, Dave, as we can see a lot of people now taking that choice, a little uh, hold on course, a little choice to go and get some refreshments from around the circuit. And our super bikes now make their way out, Dave. Uh, have you ever seen a guy wheelie a bike so far up that the mud guard touches a floor as box? No, no. no. There's a lot of things I haven't seen. There's a Mexican wave going on. Yep. While we've got guys doing wheelies and burnouts on motorcycles, there's Nakamura's car being lifted up like almost like a, an arcade machine, toy machine, onto the back of a truck. Nothing normal is happening at all. No. So just soak it in, people. This is what you've got, and this is only the warm-up. Believe me, I've been saying it all the way through the top 32. The top 16, imagine this amped up another maybe million degrees. That's, that's a what million I'm, degrees? A million degrees, exactly a million. Exactly a million degrees. A million degrees. Up that far, and then you, I mean, you have to bring in a little bit of, I'm not even gonna say what we're bringing in, but just a lot. Just a, yeah, yeah, all of this will seem like a distant, boring memory when we get to that top 16. Well, the but sun look, will go down soon, and yeah, then we can really show you what fans filling the entire stands. This is absolutely insane. The atmosphere in it, the noise in here is just ridiculous right now. I mean, this is just a lower level as well. There is a whole other level above oh, yeah. that that is way higher and up. This particular area here, this is a uh, team's Look at this, look, guys, we, we're going to pan out now and show you. Look, look, just take just a look at Just as far as you can see, there is people. There's people I can't even make out what they're wearing. They're no. that far up there. And the view is great everywhere. We've been around the stadium, Ian. Yeah. We, it took us about a, a month to get around it. It's huge. 2,000 <laughs> rooms, 2, rooms in yep. the stadium. 
and uh, the cables at the top, 1,200 ton of cables just to hold up the screens in the middle. These are facts and figures that I just couldn't believe. And uh, every single seat gone. Incredible. And uh, Nakamura will look on and say, mm, he's already probably a little radio back to the team going, we're going to need some stuff. Yeah, we're going to need, gonna need some bits and some stuff to get this car back going again. And look at the scenes on the track right now, Ian. We've got all those uh, stunt riders out there just entertaining people. Yep. Just keeping them going. And Nakamura saying, huh, nothing compared to the burnout that I just did. Did you see that? He's sitting he on top of the He did a wheelie, then he jumped and sat on the fuel tank and carried on riding the bike. Easy. You were no. doing way better tricks than I, that on the scooter think, last yeah, night. Yeah, I think I've seen this in a computer game. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Press X square circle. These guys are Cheat just... Cheat codes. Yeah, these guys are incredible. I mean, whatever about being in a car on two wheels, doing some burnouts, doing some warm-ups, is pretty tough to do, right? Yeah, well, I mean, he's drifting a Harley-Davidson, David. And I, I assume they're very maneuverable. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, they're super known, light. Yeah, known for their maneuverability. <laughs> so they're out here trying to uh, put on a show for the fans. That's what it's all about, burning some rubber. That is so cool. Oh. Everything, everywhere you look. You'll catch Dave you doing look. that tonight at the, after, at the after party. Yep, you'll see me. There'll be no bike, I'll just be falling over on my own, but that's fine. <laughs> but uh, you can see the drivers have been on the start line a very long time now, and that's been a big cleanup for Nakamura. They've got it all sorted now. Look at the people. Look at the people in. That's, that's a sea of people. I mean, have you ever in your lifetime imagined look this? Look at that view, Dave. That is ridiculous. Oh, this is this is drifting now. This is this is what drifting we, is. We this said is normal. The, this is the you new know, normal. When the promos we shot earlier in the day, we said, where do we go from here? Well, where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean. Well, we go to the battle between Marco Zacherl and Max Miller, who are in very similar cars. Yes. Two but BMW F22 BMW 2 Series. I mean. All of the power. Two different power plants. We yep. have a V8 Turbo. We have a 2JZ. Very similar power figures. One brand new build, one that's been around for a while, one that's been used in competition, knows the car very, very well. But another man, Max Miller, the Ukrainian, he's not scared to put it to the wall, Dave. Absolutely not. And we've got the Czech Republic going head to head with the Ukraine in this battle. So a real international European affair here. And Zakharov, fast as hell, everyone knows it. And Max Miller on his day, wild man behind the wheel. This one is gonna be interesting and both guys want to get to that main event top 16. Miller, he debuted this car this year. He's put a couple of marks on it. He's not afraid to throw down here against Zakharov. No, certainly not. Look at this. He goes for it. Goes for a big dive up to the door already. And Zacharil gets into that first long outside zone. Max Miller parks up on the inside, parks on the door. Now gives him the room to transition through that inner clip. They fire back through, and Max Miller stands on the accelerator. He knows he needs to keep proximity with Marco Zacharil. We can't let him get away. Both back ends of the BMW buried into the wall as they come through the center of the circuit. Miller takes a little cheeky dive. He edges that car in, squeezes the throttle, looks for the side of Marco Zacharil's two series, and finds it across the line. Oh, Max Miller hit. Punching, slamming, love it, absolutely love it. Marco Zacharo's lead run was very good, very solid. He got around the whole circuit perfectly, gave Max Miller everything. And what Max Miller did was he just absolutely slammed into him about five times. But you know what? Not heavy enough no. that I think it's going to be a big deduction. He was just Robin's racing. Yeah, he was there. He was there. He was just showing to the judges that he did have the grip. He had the proximity. He needed to be, he proved to the judges he was where he needed to be as a chase driver. And it's very clinical. Look at this, mirroring the, the angle, mirroring the line. Look how cool that shot is with the people all all the way up in the background. Come on. This is amazing. <laughs> it doesn't, everyone's a winner. Everyone, everyone. Just being part of it. Look at the amount of, of tape holding together Marco Zacro's car. It's made of duct It's tape. just black duct it's tape. Just it's just black It's 45% duct tape, <laughs> load-bearing duct tape at this point. And Max Miller's car, you can see the marks from the black on the front of the car from hitting plenty of people. But I think this one's in the balance. I think Max Miller's done a good job in the chase. He was aggressive. He had a couple of pieces of contact, not too heavy. And, and Zach Rose had a great lead run. So here we go. Let's switch it up a little bit. See who can make, you know, can Zach Rose go close? Well, we know he can go close. Can he go close without making contact that upsets that lead car? And we're going to find out. Look at that almost contact on initiation. Max Miller fires in, looks for the outside line and gets there nicely. Max Miller on a ripper already. But Zacharil tucks himself up on the inside and a nice transition. And look at Zacharil, timed it perfectly to snap up onto the door of that white BMW as he fires through outside zone four. Tail light scrunched into the wall as he gets the stop and go. And then back into it once again as Max Miller finds outside zone five. He plants the car to the wall and Zachary will pay the favour. Something 
that something, was yeah, something happened that was over Miller the, making the contact line. with the wall. Yeah, I think Miller hit the wall after the finish line. I just heard the bang in the stadium, and I was like, "What happened there?" But um, that is a very, very competitive battle between two absolute superstars in this championship. And Zachary, you can see him looking over at Max Miller. Max Miller is one of the funnest guys on the grid. He's always smiling. And both of these guys know that regardless of the result, they put on a stormer of a show. Yeah, it was a, one hell of a show, Dave. Look at this again. It was a mirror image of the first run. Both cars on an absolute flyer of a lead line and a chase. Marco Zachary, for me, though, the way he timed these transitions to not make contact with Max Miller. And, you know, he's seen that time and time again in competition uh, already today that you can't be too greedy you need to be careful with what you do and Marco Zachary was laser focused in that chase position but for me look at this oh Miller all the way the wheel to the wall before he transitions through the center of the circuit textbook stuff from the Ukrainian driver well, I'll tell you one thing from my perspective I don't know the judges are gonna have a good discussion on this look at this they <laughs> absolutely love it so happy. I mean, if you start drifting and, and everyone starts drifting at a very, you know, humble level, yeah. like these guys have, you never in your lifetime imagine people will be cheering your name with your national flag in a stadium. And, and you know what? They're just, just soaking up the atmosphere because they don't know. It could be their last run out of the evening. It, it could, certainly it could, could be, be the yeah. last one. They want to soak in that atmosphere and get a feel for it. And Zachary and Miller will want to get to that main event, that top 16, but judges are going to have to make a call on it. The next battle is warming up in the background, so I think we're going to get a decision on this one very soon. And we are. Who's going through to the top 16? Marco Zacharel gets the win and goes through to the top 16, beating Max Miller. Kevin, quick one from you. It looked to me like Zacharel just had it all dialed. Absolutely, he did have it all dialed, uh, but not taking it away from Max Miller at all. A fantastic two runs from him as well. But we had to look at the minute details. You look at lead to lead. Um, Max Miller made a mistake where he missed the inner clip three. Other than that, the lead runs were very, very similar. And then you look at the chase runs as well. Uh, Zacharel and Max Miller having both fantastic chase runs, but you saw that Max Miller deviated from the line a little bit and had a little bit of a cut in between outer zone four and outer zone five. And that's the real details that are separating these drivers at the top level. Well, you gotta be, you gotta be decisive. As I mean, Kevin O'Connell, you gotta say, look, I'm, this is what I'm looking for. This is that you have to decide with such small details because the quality level is so high. It's almost like you know you're, you're going through with a fine tooth comb because it's so. And here's a massive championship battle lining up. Laurie Heinen, he's been the story of the year, the Finnish dri driver who's brought his fan base all over Europe. They're pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. I've never seen more passionate fans than his fan base but he's got Connor Shanahan ahead of him in the championship Shanahan is true to the top 16 Laurie Heinen has to get it done if he loses this battle he will not be your 2023 champion that's what's on the line at Karkoshik nothing to lose and a big player in these stadium events the Polish driver has podiumed more stadium events than anyone else on this grid Heinen has got a big task ahead of him here Heinen's got to be inch perfect to go through Karkoshik and you know what he looks cool he looks calm and he has to be ready he certainly has to be ready the nerves are piling on now for this young Finnish driver can he do what he said he was going to do and win this event and win the championship he now slots the car through the gears down he comes a big flick across the circuit Karkoshik takes a straight line approach and I don't know if that's going to pay off a little bit of separation already as Karkoshik shortcuts into that inner zone and Laurie Heinen looks like he's back on form once again as Heinen absolutely nails it to the wall but now here comes Karkoshik as he starts to turn the dial he starts to apply the pressure as Karkoshik comes through the smoke, he's in the middle of the circuit. He's going to straight line into our side zone five. But Laurie Heinen is absolutely dialed to the wall. That's what he needed. That's what Heinen needed to go out there in this battle action and show he is dialed in. His fans will have been very nervous before that one. How what form is he in? How's he looking? And then, you know, practice fine, qualifying, you're just one car, but how is he looking? He looks dialed. He looks like he is at home, no stress, no pressure, a little rub of the bumper. Karkoshik making some big errors. His mirroring, it was a little sketchy, on and off, in and out, changing angle. It wasn't smooth, in, and Heinen gave him everything to work with. He certainly did. Look at that. Oh, the wheel hopping off the tarmac from Karkoshik. They gripped that car up so much, it was freewheeling around the track. But Laurie Heinen, look at this, absolutely laser-focused. He's dialed. But for me, it was, the, it was the wavering, it was the wobbling. Karkoshik made a lot of mistakes, and one of the big ones for me was right here in the center of the circuit. 
kind of come up a little shallow on the transition and he triangulated that line and he made a dive at a funny angle on outside zone five. Yeah, love it, triangulated. Great like that. word. That's exactly what he did. He I got the Pythagoras theorem out and everything yeah. this weekend. He should have been curving when he was triangling. Yeah, yeah, you know. So uh, Karkashi going on the inside of the track, that's what the judges don't want to see. And it's no. happened a few times tonight where you get lost in the smoke, you get a little discombobulated of where you're going to be in the center of the circuit, and all of a sudden, you're in the wrong place altogether. Heinen just losing that little rear bumper. I think that bumper's been knocked off every single round this year. <laughs> I'm even surprised to keep finding it at the end of the event. Laurie Heinen into the chase position to finish fans. The flags are up in the grandstands as, I mean, I say grandstand, it's all a grandstand. It's, all a grandstand. it's just a every, huge, every, a, part of every it. single part I can see. And there's so many Finnish fans here willing Laurie Heinen on. And Heinen can't let Karkashi get away. This one, championship on the line. Heinen diving in, but a little cautious to start with. Yeah, he's giving him some room to maneuver. It was a late initiation from Karkashi. And now Laurie Heinen starts to feel the pressure, starts to push on to the door of David Karkashi because they get into outside zone four. Heinen once again, though, giving him the room to maneuver, but it's scrappy from Karkashi. He's shallow in the outside zone. He's trying to try drive away from the finished driver. And now through the center of the circuit, it takes a weird line to outside zone five. And Lori Heinen adapts to it. He adjusts as any foot running champion would do. He jumps onto the door. Yeah, I think that's job done for Heinen. For me, I mean, Karkoshik, an incredible driver. Lori Heinen this year, he just doesn't make mistakes. And I remember when we spoke to Connor Shannon, we spoke to Yuha Rinson, and we spoke to many drivers, and they said, the reason he's so dangerous is he doesn't make mistakes. He would already be your championship leader if it wasn't for a mechanical failure in Finland. It wasn't even Laurie's fault. No. And that, to me, says a lot, that he hasn't been stopped. The car has stopped him. But tonight, if that car is working, what will stop him? Because it's not going to be David Karkoshik. No, it's certainly not going to be David Karkoshik. And, and you know what? We're not judges. We're just speculating. We need to make it official. But from where me and David sit, we've watched a little bit of drifting in the last 10 years. We know what we're looking at. And Karkoshik, I think Karkoshik knows it. He knows it wasn't the cleanest run um, that he could have laid down. I'll tell you what, Karkoshik's got far better hair. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> far better hair. Big smiles from Karkoshik. It's not his perfect season. No. But he always smiles. He's a really, really good pro. But I have a feeling we know which way this one's going to go. And Laurie Heinen from Finland goes through to the top 16. And the roars come up here in the stadium. The Finnish fans have come alive. They're starting to believe, Ian. They're starting to believe. Well, the fight's on. Oh, the it's fight on now. For the championship it's on is now. on. Shanahan and Heinehan, one and two in the championship, both into the main event top 16. That's what we wanted as neutral fans, and that's what we're getting. Oh, we're certainly getting it, Dave. We're getting all of it. Look at Laurie Heinehan, business as always. He says that, that's a job done. Now I get a little rest before top, top 16. But we got to move on to another huge battle for the championship. Heinehan's got the job done, but Connor Shannon's brother, Jack Shanahan, now sitting third in the championship, still mathematically can win this championship tonight. But he will go head to head against one hell of a wild card. Steve Bagsy Biagioni from the UK. And Bagsy has been unstoppable on these tight arena tracks over the years. So has Shanahan. This is almost a final in our top 32. And both of these guys are not going to want to go home this early in the competition. Shannon said he's got to keep the head, he's got to keep focus. Bagsy says, this is the biggest stage of them all. That's where I shine. That's what's on the line. UK versus Ireland, top 32. Yeah, this is a big one. This is a big one for Bagsy. This time last year, he was denied the chance of getting further in competition to, due to a DB. This time he says, I'm not going to let anything happen. I'm going to make sure everything is dialed. Look at this, a thumbs up all round. The cars bang into gear. It's Bagsy versus Shanahan. This is for the championship. This matters for Shanahan. But Bagsy won't care. We want to take him down in fair form. And look at this, a big dive from Bagsy on initiation. But Shanahan's dialed. He's in the wall. He's dialed all the grip on, but that doesn't matter for Bagsy. He now starts to make that proximity back. And he goes for a big dive across the circuit as Bagsy turns the screw and looks for the wheel of Shanahan's 86. Right up onto the front goes Bagsy. That was dangerous from the British driver as they come through the centre of the circuit. Shanahan deep into outside zone five, and once again, Banksy into the pocket, onto the door. Shanahan on the wall, Banksy on the back bumper. Oh, it's everything we thought it would be and more. Jack Shanahan gets his business together in the lead position, but Banksy 
very good proximity, but he's cutting a lot of track. Yeah. He's on the inside, and what we would often say is that being on the door is right, being on the front wheel is a little too close. And he got up on that front wheel a couple of times, and it boxed him in, but still a phenomenal chase run. Take nothing away from the skill and ability of both of these guys, of every driver on the grid. The Irish fans starting to believe that Jack Shannon and Connor Shannon can do it here tonight. But uh, I'm looking at Laurie Heinen, I'm looking at Juha Rinton, and I'm also keeping one eye on Peter Geinsek because they are also looking very strong. Bagsy back in the saddle for this weekend alone in Driftmasters, and he does a good job. He stays with Shannon. We know Shanahan's fast, and we know he's tough to chase with all that flair, with all that angle. Bagsy does a good job, but he stays with him and definitely puts the pressure on the Irishman into the second half of this battle. He certainly does. Look at this from Bagsy. You know, he's very dangerous. Right up onto the front wheel. Look at the angle. He's flirting with danger there, Dave. Some of those moves that Bagsy made were scary, and I thought he was going to knock um, Shanahan into a spin. Shanahan comes up a little short there on that touch and go. Don't know, we didn't see that on the first half of the run. Uh, judges saying there could be a contact there coming out of the zone. Uh, not sure what happened. Look at this. Oh, front wheel to front wheel. Dave. Just look at this. Does it make sense if you turned on drifting today and you've never seen it before? Have a look at those two front wheels right there. Tell me what sense that makes to you physically. That is ridiculous. Oh, speechless. That is ridiculous from both of these guys. Look at the. Is that a supercharger just spinning away yep. there? You can just see the belt spinning under. It's so cool. That shot, those uh, high definition slow mo phantom cameras just give us that, that moment to breathe it in, right? Yeah. Just to slow it down and say, do you not understand how ridiculous what we're looking at here is? But we got to do it again. We got to do it again. We got to spin so him around. Bagsy is going to be in the lead. Shanahan in the chase. Jack Shanahan. Well, at the moment we have only Dwayne McKeever dropping out of that championship hunt. You can see that is a lot of Shanahan tears in the audience right now as Jack Shanahan chases in Steve Bagsy Biagioni. Yeah, Bagsy's gone for a big initiation. Shanahan mistimed it a little bit, and now he finds himself on the front wheel. Bagsy now flies across the circuit. Shanahan finds himself with a wheel on the inside. He needs to clean this one up. Does Jack Shanahan? He's going for the repay. Tags the front wheel of Bagsy's car. It upsets the line. Bagsy into the wall now. Foot flat to floor. Jack Shanahan starts to batter and bruise the side of Bagsy's Nissan 200SX as they get into outside zone five. Shanahan loses a little ground. He's a little wobbly. The back panel start to come off of Bagsy's car. That's Shanahan. unbelievable. That is unbelievable driving. I mean, if this is the top 32, Ian. I mean, we, we come to the stadium, we talk about it for weeks, we talk about it for months, we talk about the, the hype, the anticipation, the emotion that this event has brought. They're, they're delivering. These drivers are delivering. Run by run. Because you can build it all you want, but it's up to these guys, these special individuals, to come here and put goosebumps on the arm of everybody watching at home and here in the stadium. And that's what that was. That was Jack Shannon on the ragged edge, doing everything he could do to make that his win. And I'm not sure what way this one's going to go. I have no idea, Dave. I have no idea whatsoever. You know, we, we kind of penalised Bagsy a little bit for being on that front wheel, but Shanahan did exactly the same thing. So really, lead to lead, chase to chase. This is going to come down just to that qualifying line. Who made more mistakes? I'm pretty sure there were some contacts from both of these guys and you can see look at Bagsy in the wall the back end absolutely pinned to it well they held nothing back they held nothing it's back. all on the track regardless of the decision neither driver are going to be disappointed with that showcase of ability no, no not at all look at that look what it means to the Shanahan fans they are emotional and I mean it's almost emotional for everybody here because they know how much it matters Jack Shanahan Steve Bagsy Biagioni decisions will drop in and it's a one more time it's a one more time and I got to go quickly to uh, my man, Kevin O'Connell. Kevin, that was sensational. Yeah, absolutely sensational. But it, both runs being virtually a mirror image of each other with some minor differences. You compared lead to lead, and I think Jack had slightly better of a lead run, whereas Bagsy was on the qualifying line, but he was actually making contact and bobbling a little in his lead run. He's making very minor mistakes. And then you compare chase to chase, and I think Bagsy probably had a little bit of a better chase run overall, probably a little bit more proximity and a little bit closer. Uh, but Jack had very, very good proximity the whole way throughout as well and not making any major mistakes. So if you really had to uh, find a very small details, you'd probably say Jack maybe took the lead, but Bagsy probably took the, the chase as well, so you'd have to see that go one more time. Well, we ain't complaining. No, Nobody no, here in attendance no. is complaining. That no. was incredible. We are only getting to the last two, three battles of our top 32, and I already have seen all I've ever wanted to see from drifting, and we're only getting started here, folks. It's about to go down. Here we have two more massive heavyweights stepping into the ring. Jacob Kroll and Joachim Anderson. And uh, yeah, Joachim Kroll's second qualifying run yesterday was a banger. Sixth position. I know, a pistol. 
out of nowhere. Yeah, just literally. boom. And Joachim Madison, he's not afraid to get that beautiful new car all destroyed on these walls. Jakob Kroll from Poland, Joachim Madison from Sweden. Here we go for a spot in the top 16. Here we go. Nice initiation from Jakob Kroll. Nice and early. Gets into it. Gets into the outside zone. Joachim Madison looks for the door. Gives him the room. Very clever from the Swedish driver as they fire back through once again. Joachim Madison now though needs to start applying that pressure, and he does. He makes a big dive and contact onto the door of Joachim Andersen from Jakob Kroll. He comes firing through and Yo big slow on the handbrake from Kroll and it upsets the line into outside zone five and that opens the door for Joachim Andersen. Andersen there with him right to the end. Oh, everybody's up their game now. Every driver on this grid is going for it. We had a bit of a lacklustre start with Randalou and Robin Pair just not getting their cars together. But since we hit Korpelinski and Heydrich all the way to the end of this top 32, wow. It has been a show that's lived up to the hype. And look at this, Krull, that could have been a bit wider in some areas, but Anderson, just a lot of aggression in the chase position throughout this run. Jakob Krull, so calm, so collected behind the wheel on the transition. Look at these shots. Just take a look at that. There's two cars running an inside concrete wall with nine stories of people behind them. Just take it in. If you're a drift fan, you know what this means. Jakob Kroll, though, did a good job in that lead position, but it was the decel across the transition for me, Ian. Just looked a little strange, right? Yeah. So he comes through the center section. It looks to me like, watch the touch and go marker, if we can get it out. Yeah, gets there, transitions back. It's not too bad, a little, little handbrake job, but he kept it moving. So I think this is kind of in the balance. Yeah, Anderson had a great chase run, really close, really aggressive. Another one that I'm not too sure about. Second run. Anything can happen. Anything can, always does happen here at the Drift Masters European Championship, Dave. Look at this, he slots the car into gear. Look at the nervous legs of Jakob Kroll as he dances on the pedals, trying to get that car away, and he wants to make sure he's up close and personal with Joachim Anderson as Anderson now gets into that first outside zone, tags the wall, and it upsets the car, but he gets himself settled and back into it. Now Jakob Kroll goes for the dive, tucks himself up on the inside, but makes it work, and Jakob Kroll's closer than Anderson was now. Into outside zone four, he goes, he's parked that car on the wall. On the door goes Anderson as they fire through the touch and go, oh, big dive, big dive from Jakob Kroll. Anderson wasn't expecting that one and he pulled it off and how he made it work, I'll never know. Oh, that's it, that's just it. I just threw my hat across the room. You don't get away with that. What was how? that? How, how did he do it? He came through, and I'm not exaggerating, five million miles an hour through the center of the track there. You need to stop exaggerating figures. 17 million miles an hour that's through, yeah, more accurate. I thought it was the biggest crash we were ever going to see. Uh, and how he got away with that. Jakob Kroll, his transition on the inner zone was also... Look! Oh! That is absolutely sensational. Closer, I think, than we've seen anybody there. That's the risky spot, right? Yeah. And then you go, you know what? You know what? You don't want to be risky. On that big, on, speed, on on yeah, the big on speed transition. You know where you can't see anything on the other side? You just blindly go through the smoke? Yeah, watch this. Baff! Whoa. Like, there he is. Oh, my God. Jakob Kroll. That man has had some different cereal this morning for breakfast because he wants this. I think he's had the James Dean banana, you know? Yeah, he just said, oh, oh. But just watch this again. Oh, where's Jakob Kroll? Uh, I, I thought I saw him earlier, and oh, there he oh. is. Wow. And look, Anderson is still deselling. Yeah. Kroll is accelerating, and he still makes it work and doesn't make contact. That's. Uh, it's not perfect in terms of line, no, no, but it, it's so it, exciting it does, to watch. It forces him into a little bit of yeah, an error. Yeah, he gets stuck kind but. of on the middle, but. Oh, just look at this. I'm just, I'm supposed to try and make sense of this. We're here up, someone said, would you guys go up there and make sense of this? We can't make sense of this. No. Anderson and Kroll, who is going through to the top 16? They're nervous, they should be. Here we go. It's going to be Jakob Kroll getting the win, going through too, and it means the world to him. In front of the home fans, getting the book called. Anderson did a valiant effort. Kevin. Uh, kind of a bit of an insane transition there through the center section. Was that the standout moment? It was definitely one of them, absolutely, Dave. If you really break it down, lead to leads were virtually identical. Both drivers, the only mistake on it is a little bit of wall contact from both of them on their lead runs. So for us, it really all comes down to the chase runs. And if you look at it, Kroll, fantastic moments of brilliance in his chase run, some great moments of proximity, like you said there, that dive coming into outer zone at five. And unfortunately, Joachim just not matching that proximity or those wow factor moments. It wasn't a huge amount of separation to, to find the winner, but overall, uh, Kroll definitely did enough to come away with the win. Awesome to hear, Kev. You know what I love about it? That's, that's exactly what Kevin said, wow moments. Yeah. It's going to take a couple of them tonight to win this event.
you're not just going to smoothly get yourself through. And if there's two guys that love a, a little bit of wow moments, it's our next two drivers. Tor Arne Kavia from Norway, Alexander Kosohov from the Ukraine. Two guys that stood out in the round five in Germany as top dogs. They're going at it one more time here. This is going to be Tor Arne Kavia in the lead. As a wild card, Kosohov right with him into that first card. Kavia with a very wide entry here. Yeah, he's gone for it. Kavia's known for these big, fast, wide entries. And now he sticks it back in that car to the wall. But look at that from Kosohov. He found the ground. He made the proximity back up once again as they fire through now into outside zone four. Nice and early. But look at Kavia. He's up and gone. That car is on rails around this circuit this weekend. He fires through. Kosohov struggling to keep with him. And he's gone deep. And Kosohov puts the car into the wall. Couldn't hang with the pace from Torani Kavia. He, he, he tried to pull what is now known in the trade as a Jakob Kroll. Yeah. And he just overshot it. And that, to me, with Jakob the same, that's the dangerous part. Yes, you get the wow moment as you shoot through the smoke, but you get it wrong slightly and you're in the wall. And that's what Kostov did. And I wonder, is Kostov able... I don't think he is. I think he's bent the suspension arm in the back of that car. And I have a feeling that he could be out of competition here. Uh, do you know what Early the, days, but me, I'm just it's saying... A, it's the pace. Look how fast... Uh, Kavir comes through there, look, he barely slows the car down, and Kosohov, because he's on the chase line, he's slightly offline, found himself a fire too early. I think that Kavir may be the first driver of this entire competition that hasn't decelled at all through the centre of the track. Watch this. Watch. Watch the rear wheels. Full steam, transitions, full back on oh, it he, again. Little, he dabs little the handbrake for a Kosohov second. thinks, I'm just going to follow you. And then all of a sudden, at the very last moment, Kavir goes, yeah, we're going over here. Kosohov's like, oh, no! Into oh, the wall. Man. I think it will Kosov be able to continue. I'm not no, too sure. No, that's the wheel. Look, the suspension. So Kosov is going to be out of competition here. And that's the knife edge thing that we don't talk about enough, Ian. No. Is that if you hit the wall, you're probably out of competition. You're, you're out. It's, even it's if you're in the lead, done. even if you're winning, even if you're the best in the world and you're in the last corner and you hit a wheel or your first run, you make any damage on the car and you can't safely continue on the second, you're out of competition. So Kavia, who's definitely hit the wall, you can see. Uh, Many, many cable ties being run. There's already many in there. But uh, basically, Kavia's back end has just decided I'm not friends with you anymore. I don't want to be part I of I don't want party. to be part I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. I've left the chat. <laughs> I do not want to be part of the rear end of your car anymore. We've had a talk. I mean, the, the spoiler, the bootleg, the lights have all had a conversation and said, I'm not sure that we should be involved anymore. Yeah. And we just prefer to be on some sort of show car. That would be beautiful. Just in the paddock, getting a little polish every Sunday. Every time you come out here, Tor, you're smashing me off a wall. I feel like you've, we've, you never say it, but there's a problem here. There's a, yeah. Did you know? So uh, I don't know what sort of body work that Marcin is doing here. He goes. Marcin's upgraded his tool yeah. collection. He's got cordless drills now, angle yeah. grinders. He's almost a walking hardware store at this point. He's a and, real uh, professional. He is. And you know what, what I love about this is he's not even attempting to put it in the right place either. He's just said, this is somewhere that it should be, and that is enough for me, and you go fix it after this run. Yeah, so this is not my job to make it yeah, pretty. I'm not a body shop. I just want, to, want it to stay yeah. on there. I will just tape and, and cable tie this till it doesn't move, whether it's upside down or not. And look at that, Kavia's fan base in the crowd. It's amazing to see it. It's drifting, and we're seeing T-shirts. We're seeing flags. We're seeing face paint. Seen everything. Everything. I want to go out there. Do you want just, to go party? I just want to go out there and just soak it in. <laughs> okay, here comes Kavia. For he's just got to initiate. He's, yeah. yeah, just got to get through that first corner. And he's going to go through to our top 16. Not the way he would have wanted it. Obviously, very unfortunate for Alexander Kosov. And he, I think he was a real contender. Kosov just couldn't follow the pace of Kavia. Kavia's going for an absolute show run here. Yeah, he's going to put on a show reel. This is going to be a highlight reel for Kavia. He's not going to mess around. He's just going to throw down. And, I mean, I mean, you're, you're into the top 16. You think you wouldn't want to risk the car. You just, you know. I'm just watching the pace here. Yeah, I'm look thinking, how fast he is. Yeah, I'm not sure everyone can, can, can handle that pace. And Kavia would go up against Jakob Kroll. Talking about the Divey boys. They'll be in the same battle in the top 16. Kroll against Kavia. Oh, that's going to be special. The wheel check. Oh, oh, the wheel he set his fire. wheel on fire. Wow, he set the wheel on fire, Kavir, and then put the wheel out wow. of fire by just driving on. I carry what? on drifting. Something wrong with this man. That look, his mum is in the crowd going, just stop driving. Just stop. stop. You've done it now, you've won. Everything's fine. Just go back in, relax. Don't set everything on fire. Kavir, incredible stuff. So he set the tire on fire, saw the fire. And then put it out. Then said, I'm just going to put it out by spinning it more. Yeah. And uh, that was the logic he used, and it worked. And there you go. We made that official Kavia with a win. Yeah. Look at this. Watch Obvious this. one there. On the 360, look, ready? Boom. 
tyre catches fire right there. Oh. And he's like, oh, it's getting hot in here. I might extinguish he has a look. That. He has a look in the mirror and goes, yep, ah, that's that, a problem. I'm on fire here. Might as well just keep going. I might run away from the fire. And he, look at this, as if it, nothing happened. He just waves just to the fans. Waving. What wow. a showman. Well, at least we can all take a step back and calm down now from that incredible run. No, we can't. Oh, no, wait. Something coming. What's going up? Uh, we got one more time. Exactly. One because more time. it is Jack Shannon and Bagsy, and I don't know if I have the heart for another one of these, because that was sensational the first time around. And you know what happens. You know what happens. On the second run, Ian, what happens? Everyone goes another 10%. And then it gets scary. What happens is they lose their mind a little bit. So they go, oh, if that wasn't good enough, I'm going to push a little bit exactly. harder in the so, wall. So I need to touch him yep. more. We need to be closer on transitions. And all of that ends in tears. Yeah. Misery. So basically, uh, Jack Shannon will have known that was, I did really well there, but not enough to beat Bagsy. Bagsy knows the same. Yep. And now, what have you got to do? Where you got to do something special. You got to do what Kevin O'Connell said. You got to be the wow moment. Yep. Where is the wow moment in this? And two guys here, big old bag of wear moments in their past life. So this is ready to rock and roll, right? I mean, just they, they're going to have to push to a place where they're yeah, both I, I, uncomfortable. I'm a little nervous on this one. I mean, they both push to a place where they're both uncomfortable and they know they might risk the car. But well, here for, we go. But Jack, the championship's on the line. Yeah. He will risk the car. He'll throw everything away for Bagsy. He doesn't care. He'll risk the car for a chance to get on a podium here at Drift Masters. They fire in. Bagsy goes for a different approach on initiation. He doesn't lose him this time. Now Shanahan buried into the wall, but Bagsy buried onto the door. That GT86 through they come on that front clipping point. Bagsy gives him the room to maneuver. Now dives it on an outside zone four. And look at this. Bagsy once again finds the front wheel. Shanahan cleaner on those outside zones. And Bagsy appears through the smoke and he's closer than he was before. Now turns the screw. Jack oh, and Shanahan. He spun it. Shanahan spun over it rotated it. Yeah, he spun it on Arizona 5 to me. And the Irish fans are think, cheering. Yeah, I think the Irish. I think they think it was contact. But I think Jack's over rotated that. That was my first opinion there. Jack backed it into the wall and outside zone I five. think exactly what happened on his qualifying run happened again. I think he over rotated and went in too fast. Ran out of angle, trying to be on too fast. That's just first impression. We'll look at the replay. Here, here we go. Look, here we go. Look at the angle, he's Jack's gone. on, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone, and Bagsy hasn't touched him until he's already at 90 degrees. And that would be the end of the championship run for Jack Shanahan after probably one half of the, well, we still have the second half of the battle, but it's an incomplete for Jack Shannon, as far as, far as I can see. Well, look, we'll look, we've got Bagsy in front of us now. We can see out the commentary tower. He's not moving the car. I do believe that there was contact, look, front wheel to front wheel. Yeah, that's a heavy hit. That was a lot heavier than it first seemed. And it's really made a mess at the front end of Bagsy's car. Now, if the judges deem Shanahan at fault, this will be a competition timeout for Bagsy. I think, you know, when you look at the reaction of the Irish fans, they think Bagsy's hit Shanahan, but Shanahan was spinning before Bagsy hit him. Yeah. That was clear as day on the replay. Yeah, I mean, from that camera angle, I, look, I, I, look, you can see it. The, the, the body language right there, and there's another car on fire. Um, if you want to do a convenient, it just spin up the wheels. I think it puts it out easy, right? You're not going to spin the front one <laughs> up, though, Dave. Well, you give it a go. <laughs> I don't know if you know how drifting works. It's the rear wheels, isn't yes. it? Oh, wow. Oh, it's crazy, right? Hey, it's six rounds in, I got it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. <laughs> I think Jack, look at the body Jack language. Knows. He knows. Jack knows. He knows. And that's the difference. Jack Shannon is a professional driver. He knows he over-rotated it. And you know that at the moment he's saying to Bagsy, I, I messed it up. Now they're watching the stream, they're yeah. watching the and broadcast, they're watching the and now they're saying, oh my God, now they Something's understand happened. what's happened. I think Jack Shannon's body language says, I've made the same mistake I made in qualifying, I went too hot into that corner. He was trying to outdo Bagsy. I'm not sure, Bagsy's oh, car is stuck so it's on the ground. Bent, it's bent the, the bumper bar, the frame that holds the front bumpers in place, and it's locked onto the floor, so they can't actually move Bagsy's car at the moment. Very interesting developments here as we, I think we're going to see in this top 32 then, if that is correct, that would be Dwayne McKeever and Jack Shanahan out of the championship hunt. They did still end up wherever they end up, Jack and Dwayne in the points, but to me it looks like the sole Irish driver left with a chance to win the championship would be Connor Shannon because Jack cannot catch Oh, I don't now. even, I can't. It, it's top 32. Stop making these allegations. My putting, heart is... I'm doing the math. Stop it. You're not good at math. I'm, I'm not, but I've, but We've I've got done a guy it. for that. Well, look, Connor Shannon is through to the top 16. Hey. Laurie Heinen's through. Yuha Rintanen's through, right? So yeah. One Irish, two Finnish, and Vjainsek. So those four, 
are capable of winning the championship tonight. But hold on as far as I'm concerned, right now, we don't know what the decision yeah, we, is here. I was here. just going to say, let's not get ahead of ourselves, Dave. But We're excited. Me, yeah, but to <laughs> me, I think that one's going to be an obvious call. You think that I think it's going to be an obvious call, but I don't want to sound biased because it's English versus Ireland oh, in the we'll commentary end, tower yeah, as well. Yeah, we end up in a Barney up here. <laughs> it's never happened yet in 10 no. years, and I don't think it'll ever happen. It could happen tonight. <laughs> it could happen tonight. Emotions are running Emotions high. Emotions are high, Dave. <laughs> We're very emotional guys today. So the question here is, can they continue to compete? It looks like Bagsy can't continue to compete. Would that be right? Or can he? I, I don't know. I think... That, uh, is bumper bar still intact? Can I, still I think if they the remove the bumper bar, then potentially Bagsy can carry on the run. Or does Bagsy go for a competition timeout if he's deemed one way? We don't know just yet from the judges, but it will be. Kevin, we're just going to jump in with you here. What is the call at the moment from the judges? What's happening right now? We've had a look at it, and we've looked at it from multiple different angles. And in our opinion, it looks like Jack just came in far too hot, uh, maybe lost a little bit of rear grip, over-rotated, and therefore he was the cause of the contact. He was already spinning before Bagsy even hit him. Therefore, if Bagsy needs a competition timeout, uh, he can have it. He can have up to 10 minutes to fix that car. But as you can see here, no contact. Jack is coming in, starts to over-rotate, already spinning, and there is the contact. Therefore, Jack was already at fault. Yeah, that's uh, how, we, how we saw it as well, Ian. It looked to me, yeah. straight off the bat, you could just know by the, the language of the car, it was just it was spinning around regardless of Bagsy. I don't think Shannon was making it any further around that track. And right now, it looks to me like Bagsy is going to talk to the Starline Marshal. They've removed the front bumper bar from the car, and they're going to say, you could have a competition timeout, or the bumper bar could be in a situation where he could run straight from the off. Remember, he just has to put in a clean run here, and he would have, and with, with Shanahan, with Shanahan now having that incomplete, in, in a sense, or being at fault, uh, Banksy just has to complete a run in any way, shape, or form, sort of, you know, without being an inactive or whatever, uh, or a bad lead run. But I'm sure Banksy's being informed that on the star line, Shannon, you can see, already dejected, knows he's at a huge disadvantage. Now, stranger things have happened here. Yeah, but I think Martin, our start line marshal there, has just been relayed the information to Bagsy to say, you aren't at fault, you do get to go and check the car out. And I think Bagsy, you know, Bagsy's a long time in the game now, Dave. He's going to take the, the car back to the team in the paddock, and they're going to quickly check the front alignment, make sure the car's safe to run, and then he'll be back out on circuit. Yeah, and we can see Bagsy, from our view, leaving the track, ready to go and check the car out. Now, Jack Shanahan won't get that opportunity, Dave, because he was the cause of the no, contact. Jack will have to stay He'll on the start line. Stay, stay, stay how it is. And you can see Jack Shannon now. This is, this is, I mean, it's been a very up and down season for Jack Shannon with the highs of winning Riga in yeah. Lafayette. He was the king of Riga. He was leading the championship into Germany. And then it was Etesa Da who took him out in Germany in the top 32. That was a stumbling block. And could he go out again in the top 32? And that would obviously be curtains for his championship hopes this year. He'll still end up high in the championship, but you know what I mean? He was in the fight very much alongside everybody else here for the championship here tonight. And had two top 32 exits for Jack Shannon at the end of the season. It's not, it's not what he wanted. It's probably not what he deserved for some excellent runs in there as well. But we knew when that battle bracket was drawn up, Bagsy was going to be a shark in the water. He was yep. a driver that we know has these big event streaks in him. And... Shanahan now just driving around the circuit here. He's going to be made wait in the tunnel uh, for Bagsy to come back. Yeah, so I've just had it in my ears, Dave. Bagsy has taken that uh, competition timeout. He is back in the paddock now. The team are working on the car. The crew from Drift Masters will be down there with him to make sure he only has that allotted time, 10 minutes to look at the car, and Jack will be under supervision to make sure that nothing's done to that vehicle. You know, once that car enters uh, competition... And you've got to say, it. there's got to be some level of damage to suspension on Shanahan and Bagsy's car after that hit. It was a very heavy hit. I mean, look so at the, the Irish camp is dejected. Yeah, you can Dave. see the Irish fans not happy with that decision. Whatsoever. Well, not happy with the decision, oh. not happy with the, with the result, because at the end of the day, Jack Shannon just at the highest level there tried a little too hard. Well, look, I'm, I'm looking at it in this way. Laurie Heinen second in championship, Jack third, and then Juha Ritten. And Juha Ritten and now probably looking to say, well, this really secures second and third place moving forward in the top 16 for the two Finnish drivers. Or first. Or first, if Connor can get taken yes. down. And that's that's the story. Connor Shannon I mean, is the leader of the championship, but now his sort of buffer in third place, which is Jack Shanahan, is, is now out of the championship.
out of the championship race. And, and that's, race, yeah. that's our assumption. There is going to be a second half of this battle, but and God, I mean, at a night like tonight, maybe Bagsy won't even make the run around and we get it one more time, but you just don't know. And look at this, with the mechanics saying to Jack, what's the steering like? And Jack's turning the steering wheel saying, I think there is damage, but what can I do? I, there's nothing I can do about it. I made the mistake. I caused the contact, deemed by the judges. And, you know, we can see one of our Driftmasters uh, scrutineers there, safety marshals, just basically put that car in quarantine to say, you can talk to each other, you can look at it, you can't do anything yeah. to it. It's going to be interesting, and uh, look, the emotions are running very high, and as they should be. The, sk the stage has never been bigger. No, you're not watching a normal drift event. This matters more than it ever did. Yeah. So you're not watching something just another weekend. So Jack Shannon must be pretty dejected there. Becky, does he think he was at fault for that? Yes, guys, obviously not what you wanted there, Jack. It was the same corner where everything happened the last time. Can you explain to us what was happening inside the car and how is the car feeling right now? Is there any damage? Uh, I actually don't really know what's going on, uh, to be honest. Um, like, as I transitioned back, last time in qualifying when I transitioned back, I didn't, like, decel, so I thought that was the issue that I was going too fast. But uh, this time it just got onto full lock again, couldn't catch it, and when Bagsy hit me, uh, the steering is a little bit... I don't know, is it the pump or something is not right, but it's not over till it's over, so we're just going to go and see if we can make it around the track. But, yeah, it's disappointing, to say the least, obviously, because, um, you know, making, your fool, making a fool of yourself in front of not a lot of people isn't too bad, but in front of this many people, it's a bit annoying, but we better go here, so catch you in a minute. All right, Jack, good luck. Yeah, well, so I, I, what I like about that is he's such a good driver that he admits the fault. Yeah. He says, I made the error. And I mean, he could easily say, oh, I was going to, you know, carry that Pull and that Bagsy out, yeah. hit me and you could have a big argument. But he said, no, I made a mistake. I couldn't catch it. Bagsy hits him. He doesn't know if the steering is working right in the car. That's not what I would do is go back out there again. But it's a Shanahan, yep. which means that he is definitely going to go back out there. And what I like about it is he's going in here with a one out of 100 chance of staying in the fight. Even one out of a thousand because Bagsy has a full advantage from the other run. And Bagsy just has to complete a run. And as far as I'm concerned, Bagsy's in the lead position. Yep. So if he just makes a pass to the circuit, he gets the win. But maybe there's a chance. It's going to be slim, but you can be sure Jack Shannon's not going to give up on that chance, no matter how slim it is. I and mean, Bagsy is on his way back out to the track, um, just fixing up some suspension parts and obviously that front bumper bar as well being removed from the car. And uh, not, I mean, Jack Shannon obviously can see it's, I mean, are we going to see an angry Jack Shannon here? Are we going to see a driver oh. that absolutely just punches Steve Banks and Benjoni around the track? I, I think mean, that's probably what we're going to see. Yeah, 100% Because he said see in the that. interviews, remember, he wants to perform. He wants to perform. He wants to perform. Look, he wants to put on a show. But at the end of the day, Dave, look at it in this light. He can't go too hard and hit Bagsy and put Bagsy into a spin because he's definitely sealed the deal and put, put himself out of competition. Absolutely, but I think there's nothing to lose. He has to really push on Bagsy a little bit to say to Bagsy, you make the mistake this time. And, you and can let's, see, let the, let's let the th judges... This is, this is, you know... This is tense. This is like a Euro finals penalty shootout <laughs> right now. But it's a 1,000 to 1. Oh, it is. Because I know that we all know the quality of Steve Bagsy Baggioni. He, he's not a guy that folds under pressure. No. But what does Shanahan do now? He's got to go out there. I mean, I've already said, I don't think this is possible. But maybe. On a night like tonight, I could be proved wrong. But Jack Shannon is going to know that whatever he does here, he's got to hope Bagsy makes a massive error. Or that he can force Bagsy into an error. How do you do that? And the only way you do it is pressure. That's the only way you can do it. And he's in the right place to do it. He's in the right place to force Bagsy or to make Bagsy make a mistake. Well, here we go. They're back on the line, Dave. It's the last run of the 32. The, the last run of our top 32, the last battle to be decided. We will be back this afternoon. Later on today with our top 16, where things are going to get hotter again, Dave. The championship's really going to start coming alive. You think it's been fireworks now? It'll be fireworks later on tonight. There we go. They look across to the light. Shanahan slots himself into position. Bagsy off the line. Shanahan's going to give it his all. Is the car ready? Is he ready? Is he going to make a mistake? Will Bagsy perform? Oh! Shanahan makes a huge mistake. 
there is a problem with that car. Bagsy glues it to the wall and now starts to drive away as he fires through that inner clip. Jack gets himself back into it, but the car's hurt, Dave. The yeah. car is hurt. And Jack says, I'm just going to try and do anything I can. And you know what? What a sad way to see Jack Shanahan go out after so many hard rounds of competition. Bagsy sticks into outside zone five. He looks for the final zone. Jack jumps on the door and Bagsy taps the roof and says, fair play, we did it like men. Yep. Bagsy goes through to the top 16 as far as I can see. And you know what, Ian? Then there were four. Connor Shanahan, Laurie Heinen, Juha Rinton, and Peter Vjainsek. They will go into the top 16, ready for war. And one of those men will take home the 2023 championship. But the rest of the drivers on the grid, they might take home the biggest trophy in the history of drifting at the biggest event in the history of drifting. But unfortunately, neither will be with Jack Shannon as that car looked really wounded, really hurt, and just about undrivable. And that is going to hand the win to Bagsy. A dramatic way to start our top 32 with Calais Rovampera not making it to the line. And Oliver Randalu, not nobody won the first battle. And we finish with Jack Shannon bowing out of the championship after a very strong and impressive year. Uh, no question of the talent, but uh, probably a couple of mistakes at this event that cost him everything. Yeah, and you know what? I think sometimes, Jack said it before, you could get up sometimes on the wrong side of the bed and you can wake up and things can't just go your way. And I think this weekend, we've said it constantly already so far, this is going to be one of those weekends, Dave, where things aren't going to go the way. Look at the hand on the roof from Bags Steve Banks yeah, and Biagioni. Tagging the roof. Oh, look at this. Absolute sadness. They wanted the Shanahan 1-2 European finish. Yeah. It's not going to happen, Dave. But hey, that's sport, right? Sport has its highs, has its lows. And you got to give it up to Steve Banks and Biagioni coming back here. And I mean, the level Level rises every year here and he's come back and he's he's jumped in the ring with the with the big dogs and he's got the win and he goes through to the top 16 and there's two good friends behind the scenes and, and they know that it's a competition on the track and then it's all smiles at the end and Jack Shannon well now he's going to put the overalls on now he's head mechanic Jack Shannon for Connor Shannon who could still bring home the joy to the Shanahan's tonight and if they get one of them across the line I'm sure they'll be happy but the story and the drama continues here in the Pegue Naradove and it's only getting started Banksy there he is, into the top 16. It means everything to him as well, Ian. I've just looked at something, Dave. And you know what I think Jack Shanahan just said to Bagsy? Take down Laurie Heinen oh. and in top 16, Dave. Look at the results so that's, list. I would, the lip reading there. So, look at the results yeah, list. So Bagsy will go head to head later on with Laurie Heinen, which means if he beats Laurie Heinen, he'll give Connor Shanahan the championship. The championship. championship. Well, if you enjoyed it, look at this. No one threw from the first battle. These are the drivers that have got through. Naoki Nakamura, big hit with Cherba. Laurie Heinen, he's still in the mix. Look at Bagsy beating Jack Shannon. Kavia looking like a... And Karol, for me, are two guys that that's going to be one of the standout battles of the top 16 based on form tonight. Well, here we go. Top 16 grid is ready for your viewing pleasure. If you are a drift fan from anywhere in the world, have a look at the way this is stacking up. Korpelinski has no opponent. He's already into the top eight. Rintanen goes up against a taste of that who took out Jack Shannon at the last round could he do it again against the big contender and Rinton needs that win Connor Shannon needs the win against David Spossov needs it Vjainsek needs to win against Oren Nielsen Nakamura against Zacharil that's going to be absolutely crazy and Laurie Heinehan going up against Steve Bagsy Biagioni and that's the big one for the Shanahans that's where Bagsy take down one might help the other the stories are continuing as we head to the halftime show here live in the stadium we want you guys to just soak in the atmosphere. We're back for the top 16 at 6.55 p.m. You will need all of your energy, all of your breath, but only the edge of your seat because we're back here at 6.55 for the big finale. We'll see you then.